Good evening. The Newcastle Knights board will vote on a recommendation from its football department to chase unwanted rooster Willie Mason. But the Cowboys could also be on the verge of making an offer. Coaches and referees met at ANZ Stadium this morning to discuss future changes to the laws. But for Cowboys coach Neil Henry, the future of outspoken forward Willie Mason is of more pressing concern. We had a discussion about the possibility of him coming north. Uh, I relayed the contents of that conversation to Peter Parr this morning and he's talking to the board today. If they're interested, the Cowboys will need to move quickly. Knights coach Rick Stone stayed in Newcastle today for an urgent meeting with the football committee. They're finding Mason should be pursued. But any deal with the Knights will have strict behavioural clauses included, reserving the right to terminate if the need did arise. It's a stance supported by the NRL. He's like any player in the competition. Uh, we've got standards that we expect of them and uh, I'm sure the clubs will take that seriously. The club's website has conducted a poll reporting 83% of members and supporters are in favour of signing the Roosters' discard. At the prices being slated, between $50,000 to $80,000, he's coming at a good price. But some Knights power brokers are believed to be unsure whether the bargain justifies the baggage. One thing's for sure, you can forget about a bidding war. Ken's next with Sport and the NRL coaches and referees get together for a chat fest. And they liked each other. <laughs> they didn't have too much to disagree about. We'll have that. Also tonight, looking at Willie or won't he? The Cowboys set the record straight. They want him. Finding a club for Willie Mason has turned into a soap opera. But following rejection after rejection, two clubs want the big fellow. The Cowboys and the Knights are now chasing his signature. All this on a day when coaches and referees got together and found they had little to disagree about. Unwanted a week ago, Willie Mason is now at the centre of a tug of war between Newcastle and North Queensland. For the signature of unwanted rooster Willie Mason, the Knights are a step closer to making a formal offer, while the Cowboys are set to follow suit. Suddenly, Willie Mason's a wanted man. The Knights Football Committee recommending to the club's board that negotiations should begin. But they didn't want to talk about it today. Good to have the Knights, you reckon? <laughs> it's not for me to say. A poll on the Knights website claimed 83% in favour of Mason playing this year. He's had a bit of trouble on that, but if he sorts himself out, you know, he's good value. Go and play a low club man, like the Curry, Curry Bulldogs do something, he's not that good. Coach Rick Stone stayed in Newcastle to state his case while his rival Neil Henry confirmed he met Mason last night and only needs board approval to join the chase, but not at any cost. We're not in a position anyway to get into a bidding war for his services and we're hoping that, uh, that, he, uh, that he's still positive about coming north. Rugby League Summertime on Fox Sports, presented by Warrenora Plumbing Services, the petrochemical and pharmaceutical specialist. Well, terrific to have your company wherever you might be watching on Fox Sports around Australia. And a very warm welcome indeed to this week's episode of Rugby League Summertime. We come to you from the Newcastle suburb of Mayfield. That can only mean one thing. We're here to have a look at the Newcastle Knights go through their paces in preparation for season 2010. The Newcastle Knights, ironically, this time last year, our top rating program on Rugby League Summertime. Here's a look now at what is coming your way in the next half hour. Today, head coach Rick Stone previews the season ahead. I'll talk with the Knights head strength and conditioning coach Lee Clark, who will provide an insight into the athlete preparation at Newcastle. Veteran Adam McDougall drops by for a chat, as does 5'8 Ben Rogers. I'm joined by arguably the game's fittest player, Kurt Gidley. And big Steve Simpson also joins us. If it's happening in pre-season news of the Newcastle Knights kingdom, it's coming your way today on Rugby League Summertime. Like all high-performance coaches at every NRL club, Lee Clark has a significant role at the Newcastle Knights in overseeing athlete preparation ahead of the 2010 season kickoff. Clark says he's delighted with the progress being made during the off-season. 
Yeah, look, it's been uh, it's been really good. Uh, I'm really happy with the you know the attitude and the application of the players. Um, it's been quite a, a fresh feel in the in the group this year, I think, with some changes of well, obviously some staff, mainly not so much players, but um, uh, the players have really knuckled down, and I think they've. Uh, and they've gelled really well together as a unit and um, we've certainly been seeing it in their in their training and their preparation. Excellent point you make. Not that many new recruits here at the club and indeed very few people have left the club. That obviously would help you when it comes to the preparation of the athletes this time of year, not having that, that phase-in period, if you like, or that educational period. Yeah, definitely, and for a lot of these guys, it's their you know, second and third and, and fourth year together now. So, we, you know, we were originally known as a very young team, which we still are, but I think they want to get rid of that tag now and they want to go beyond, you know, being seen as a young team. We're, we're, you know, we're at that stage where we're expecting big things of ourselves and, um, you know, we're, we're hoping to deliver that this year. The obvious question... How does this current off-season differ compared to the corresponding period? What have you changed? Um, we've certainly changed a, a little bit in terms of our weekly structure. I think um, you know, there's a natural evolution in, in your preparation over years. If you do the same thing year in, year out, you know, players can go a little bit stale and, and we've changed our, our weekly structure a little bit. Um, and with the, you know, the addition of um, some new coaches as well, I think we've changed the way in which we're, we're going to play a little bit. So, um, yeah, there has been a few subtle changes, I think, this year. And touch wood, it's going well. What about technology? What, what's new that you've embraced as a club? Oh, look, I think like a lot of clubs, you know, we're using, uh, you know, we're, we're certainly using and analysing GPS units. Uh, we're, we're now using um, Sunto technology where we can you know, analyse player heart rates um, during sessions, um, including our rehab guys. Um, you know, we're looking at... Um, um, uh, you know, a few other technological advancements that are also uh, sort of starting to um, take shape for the future, like looking at, at genes of our players and how they vary. So I don't think it's uh, finished yet. It's still sort of evolving, that whole um, technological area of um, sports performance. Despite having access to all the latest monitoring technology, Clark says it's still important to listen to the feedback that's being provided by the athletes themselves. If a player says he's sore, the coaching staff heed the warning. Exactly, and look, that's how we use it. We look at, we use the technology and the information we've got to uh, make the necessary individual, you know, adjustments to player programs. And not everyone does exactly the same thing. Our guys that have been around and got a lot of miles on the clock, obviously, we look after those a little bit more, and they won't do as much as, you know, some of the guys who uh, haven't been around quite as long. So we definitely use that to, to individualise. Supplements have been in the game for a number of years now. Uh, anything differ in terms of the the way in which supplements are used? Uh, not not necessarily different. Um, I think it's more just the, uh, the latest trend is really when you deliver the supplements. I mean we've got a Masashi our major sponsor and they, they've got you know, excellent products that we use. It's more I think the key now is the timing of that nutrition, when to take them to um, avoid that muscle breakdown and make sure you're in a state of growth and repair as you know all the time basically. Can I ask as your last question just to explain to our viewers what the typical Newcastle Knights week comprises as we stand here today a couple of weeks out from trials? Yeah, well, um, basically we'll train five days a week. I mean, this year we're, we're more Monday to Friday. Um, three of those days are double sessions with field sessions in the morning or afternoon and, and gym around that as well. And then the two other days we have more of an individual skill um, session in between and there's a lot of regenerative type work, massaging and stretch classes and what have you in between. So, um, yeah, the boys keep themselves pretty busy. I will ask one more question about the rehab ward. You in good shape? Yeah, we're not too bad. We've had a couple of uh, couple of guys that had surgery in, in the off season. Um, Isaac de Goyce, for example, um, who's come back. He was always coming back really well from his knee reconstruction. Uh, Jimmy McManus had a, an unfortunate incident you know, prior to Christmas in, in breaking a bone in his foot, but he's now now sort of back out of the cam boot and back moving around. And um, and the only other one was Richard Foso, who uh, sort of an unfortunate incident playing some contact last week uh, hurt his knee. But other than that, we've got you know all but everyone on deck training, so uh, yeah, it's pretty good. At 25 years of age, Ben Rogers has been something of a rugby league journeyman, having already played at four clubs. The former Panther, Rabbitoh and Dragon showed glimpses of career best form at the Knights last season and he's hoping to build on that in 2010. And he's pleased with the club's off-season to date. It's been really good actually this year. Um, haven't been that many injuries and I think everyone's sort of ripping into training and ready to go. You had a bit of surgery uh, during the lead up to Christmas. How's the recovery there? It's actually been slow, um, slower than I thought anyway. I had a bit of surgery on the foot and ankle, and um, yeah, it's pulled up a bit sore, so I have to wait and see how it is. What role are you likely to play in the trials? Um, 
I'm going to play in that local trial first. Have I think about 40 minutes there, half a game there, and I'll be right to go for the Penrith game off Port Macquarie. So I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Start of your second full season at the Knights. If I can say this to you respectfully, you seem to grow a leg when you when you came here last year uh, in terms of consistent football. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed my footy last year. Um, Smithy started the year here. So like, he was he was real good. I liked him here. And Rick Stone's the same. He's um, you know he's, he's very down to earth. Easy to easy to talk to. Yeah. What's the most refreshing thing about joining the Newcastle Knights? I think everyone's a tight group up here. There's no little breakaway groups. Everyone's tight. Whether we sort of go for a drink or go for a feed, everyone's is nice and tight. And you can you can see that our training and and on the field. I think. What about the undoubted pressure that comes with being a knight in Newcastle, where the fans are, you know, it's well documented. Absolutely passionate would be an understatement. It and would the media be. accordingly as well. It would be. It's it's one team town, so there is a bit of hype behind it. But I think I think it's a good thing as well. Everyone's sort of behind you and, and the town look after you as well, so it's, it's a lovely spot. Rogers has already stated in this interview that he was a huge fan of former coach Brian Smith. But equally, he believes Rick Stone is doing an outstanding job with plenty of strong attributes. The greatest attribute wouldn't be his looks. <laughs> um, he's watching. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's yep. as I say, approachable. I think he's, he's down to earth. He's... Very approachable. That'll be his, his best attribute. Mm -hmm. Who's the athlete of this club that impresses you most? Apart from myself, probably Kurt Gidley. He's he's like a dog with a bone. He'll, he'll just run all day. Kurt Gidley is one of the most respected footballers running around in the NRL, and for good reason. His utility value, combined with his undisputed toughness and skill level, make him one of the NRL's elite players. Gidley says the Knights have enjoyed a productive off-season. From what I've seen, you know, post-Christmas, uh, it's been good. I wasn't there before the lead-up into Christmas, but uh, for more reports, the boys have been training you know, nice and hard in the lead-up, and then uh, there's only a couple of guys sort of in rehab, which hopefully we'll have back sort of by round one, which will be good. It's a bit of a fresh start, I suppose, with, with having a new coach. It always is, but um, yeah, Stone has been here for, I think, four or five years now with uh, with Hayes and then with Smithy, but um, yeah, finally he's got a, a head coach role, which is great for him, I think. Um, he's, he's a real down-to-earth coach and uh, a real straight shooter sort of when it comes to uh, comes to the crunch. So no, he's good. He's getting all the, all the boys really good. I appreciate he's an individual, but um, do you see a bit of Hayes and a bit of Brian Smith in, in what he does? Um, oh, I mean, it's probably probably everyone picks up a little bit from from uh, who they work with and that sort of thing. And probably Stone is a bit the same, but um, I think he's got his own his own style as well, which is which is nice and refreshing. From the club's perspective in 2009, would you describe the season as one of frustration? I mean, there were weeks on end where you're, the side was outstanding, other weeks where consistency was lacking. How would you look back and describe it? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a roller coaster at times. I think we played some, some great footy, and I, I think in the end, we I think we beat sort of uh, six or seven of the top eight teams, which was you know, a good result. But in the end, once you get to the semis, you've got to sort of start fresh, and, and it's like a new competition when you get to the semi final. So. Yeah, I mean, it'll be nice to get there back again and probably a little bit higher in the ladder this year. And, and uh, we've we've done well that we've got the, the whole sort of base again from, from the last, you know, previous couple of years. So um, looking, for, looking forward to a big year for sure. Very, um, very quiet in terms of player movement here in the gains and losses department. That would obviously indicate it's a very settled club at the moment. Yeah, for sure. That's what, you know, we've had most of these guys for sort of... Uh, at least two years and um, if not longer so we're, we're starting to build a pretty good base here and everyone knows each other nice and well and, and, and knows what they're capable of and we're just got to put it on the par. Kurt from your personal point of view you're uh, regarded as one of if not the fittest player in the NRL how much time do you spend doing extras? Oh I mean I think every player does extras these days whether it's whether it's fitness if you're a bigger guy whether it's skills or or goal kicking that sort of thing I, I certainly don't do um, you know, any extras in the fitness side of things. I think I've got to work on, on different other parts of my game other than fitness. So uh, as much as it does come a little bit natural, I guess, um, you know, I've put plenty of hard work into it and I've got my own sort of, um, my own benchmarks I, I like to try and, um, you know, stand up to as well. The Newcastle Knights player roster boasts plenty of talent in key positions. According to the Newcastle West Junior, the club's greatest asset is the camaraderie between players. We've got a good bunch of blokes here who, who, um, who, who continue to improve each year. Um, 
you know, I think our back rolls last year and Chris House and Zeb Taylor, uh, Matt Hilda, I think they were outstanding for us, those three guys. Isaac de Goyce had a great first year for us and I think if, if we keep improving as a, as a team and, and these guys who are sort of running into their first, second or third season are, are starting to you know, grow a fair bit of confidence, which is great. The Newcastle Knights program on Rugby League Summertime last year was our top rating program, I dare say, uh, a legion of Newcastle Knights fans watching again, and they probably describe you as a demigod. What message have you got for them in closing? What do you want to say to Knights fans? Oh, I mean, you know, just to be great to see them out at the stadium. Uh, once this stadium gets full on and built, which probably will be by the end of the year, sort of start of next year, um, it'll be great. But as far as this year goes, just, you know, hopefully get out and see, uh, see everyone at the game and, and support us. And, and uh, there's no doubt they're the, they're the best fans in the game. When we return, I'm joined by head coach Rick Stone. There's no doubt that you learn most at the coalface involved with the rugby league side at the highest level, which is the NRL. Steve Simpson drops by for a chat. Enjoying the training and, uh, yeah, it's been injury-free, which is great. And the mad dog, Adam McDougall, talks about football, business and his arch rival, Wendell Saylor. We're not going to miss him. I'm sure he's going to get his head on TV every opportunity he gets. On Fox Sports, you're watching Rugby League Summertime, the program that takes you behind the scenes at your favourite NRL club during the off-season. Supported by Warrenora Plumbing Services. at your NRL club during the off-season, you'll see it first on Rugby League Summertime, presented by Warrenora Plumbing Services. 31-year-old Steve Simpson has enjoyed one of his best ever off-seasons by virtue of being injury-free. The dynamic back rower says he's been enjoying the rigours of the off-season. Yeah, it has been actually, so uh, enjoying the training and uh, yeah, it's been injury free which is great, so looking forward to the year. What about the, the points of difference uh, in the preparation of the team this off-season versus previous off-seasons that you've been around the club? Much different? Yeah, a little bit. I think, uh, I suppose physically it's very similar, but uh, we've got a, a few new assistant coaches that are putting their sort of style on us this year, so uh, certainly look forward to playing sort of a different, a little bit different style to what we played last year, this year, so. Enjoying your footy as much as ever? I am actually, yeah, it's good. All the, the young fellas in the team keep you young, I think. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to the year and um, it's exciting times, I think. I know it's uh, an old cliche about youth and experience and having a, a perfect blend, but that does seem to apply here, doesn't it? It does a little bit. I think uh, I think the key here is we've got our younger players have sort of been playing for sort of two or three years now, so I'm expecting them to really, really step up this year. And um, as they did last year, I think we got to the finals and fell a little bit short there. So, um, yeah, our goals are a little bit higher this year. Who are the, who are the, the lads in the side in the elite squad that you're expecting big things from in 2010. I know you don't want to put pressure on people, but there's got to be a couple of young blokes that really impress the hell out of you. Oh, there is. I think uh, I think our halves are, are going really well. I think Scotty and uh, and Jared and and also Dodge, yeah, Benny Rogers hasn't sort of been in full time training for too long now, but uh, they're looking fairly impressive and leading the side around pretty well at training here. So I'm expecting a big year from them. And um, yeah, obviously blokes like Pato and, and Cameron Serralda, obviously if he has a great year injury-wise, I think he'll go well for us as well. Yeah, he'll certainly be a bonus for you. Terrific. Uh, a horrible leg injury, actually. Yeah, it was. He, he's done so well to come back from that, and he's trained really well, and um, yeah, he really switched on bloke too, so I think he'll add a lot to our side. Steve Simpson has achieved everything he could hope for in a stellar rugby league career, including a host of rep football and a grand final win in 2001. There's no doubt in his mind what the team's mandate is in 2010. Obviously the finals, we want to be amongst that again. I think, uh, I think going out first round against the Bulldogs in the final series last year, I think sort of burned a lot of us. So um, 
yeah, we thought we were a little bit better than that, I suppose. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, get ourselves as far up that competition table as we can. You're not the sort of guy to, to make excuses. Um, obviously, there was the high-profile issue of, uh, of, of Brian Smith linking up with the Roosters, and the side was going along pretty well up to that point in time. Um, did it have an adverse effect, or will you as a player say, we've still got to do our job and it really didn't bother us? Oh, I suppose it did if, if you look sort of deeply, but... Um, yeah, you can't make excuses, as you know. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a little sort of, yeah, I suppose something that we didn't need at the time, but um, it, it happened and we all moved on. And, um, yeah, we, we come good at the end of the year and won a few games there and, and got ourselves in the finals, which is what we're after. Adam McDougall is one of the most recognisable faces in the NRL, having enjoyed a glittering career. The 34-year-old veteran is playing some of the best football of his career and despite looking unlikely, Mad Dog, as he's affectionately known, has inked a new contract with his beloved Knights. The tough centre says it's been a long off-season. Yeah, no, it's been great. Obviously, uh, started probably a bit earlier than I'm accustomed to. We had to uh, do an army camp this year, which is the first time we've done that for a while, but uh, Stoney's um, given none of the old guys any uh, early leave passes, but uh, it's definitely been a great off-season and we've all enjoyed it. When I spoke to Brian Smith here as head coach the equivalent period last year, he, he mentioned you in the interview and talked about the input you'd made scientifically. And there's no doubt the game has gone that way in, in huge uh, inroads in recent times. And that would suit you down to the ground. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, um, at the end of the day, we train the way we play these days. And uh, there's no 10 kilometre you know, runs and uh, two day bike rides and, uh, you know, cross country, uh, you know, running and stuff like that. So obviously we're footballers and at the end of the day, that's what we do. And that's how we train these days, which is obviously uh, why I play the game. And uh, to come to training and be able to play footy and uh, do the sort of things you do on the field is very enjoyable. Mm. What about the amount of time spent with the football in the hands? Yeah, well, from day one, really here, apart from the army camp that we did, which was uh, not much fun, we've had a footy in our hand from day one. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a skill sport, rugby league, as much as it is a as it is a as it is a physical sport so uh, obviously being skillful and knowing your job and, and knowing your role in the team is very important so having a football in your hand at the end of the day we are footballers and uh, you know you look at soccer they've always got a, a ball in there at their feet so it's very important that we do the same. Adam from your perspective you must be delighted with your form uh, you're not one to necessarily wrap yourself I appreciate that but uh, the last couple of years very solid. Yeah no it's been good you know obviously enjoying your football is a big part of that and uh, you know knowing your role in the team obviously coming back to Newcastle I had a lot of success and and uh, being amongst a lot of players who I, I was familiar with their play and they were familiar with mine, it's obviously uh, been an easy fit and I'm just enjoying my football and uh, just trying to enjoy every day because um, you never know when it could be the last day you get to play footy. You have signed a, a two-year deal, but it's very much a case of see how it goes. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, like most rugby league players, there comes a point where you've got to think about life after football and uh, for myself, I invested you know, a fair bit of my money into a business and uh, I'm in that position now where you know I'm making that transition out of football into business and uh, it, it was really a decision whether whether or not my time was going to be better off served in the business for my future or whether or not um, you know I had enough time available to play football for one more season so luckily I've got a great wife who works pretty hard and she was happy enough to uh, take up my slack. I think it's opportune that you give the business a plug tell us about it. <laughs> well it's just uh, go fit platinum and uh, we're in all Westfields out there so uh, anyone wants a treadmill or wants to get fit go and uh, go to Westfield and I'm sure we'll look after you. Never one to rest on his laurels, McDougall is back at university in addition to playing football and helping his wife Belinda with their ever-expanding health business. Yeah, doing my MBA at the moment. I, I did an economics and finance degree some years ago and uh, decided with a little bit of extra time that we get off with training these days, I had time to go back and do my MBA. So, you know, the NRL's great. They, they provide us with some money to go back and study and, um, you know, you'd be an idiot not to take up the opportunity to learn while you're playing football. From uh, the point of view of Knights fans in 2010, what sort of football are they going to see from this team? Um, I think, you know, Brian Smith had a big impact on the way that we played last year. He, he tried to promote the football and, uh, you know, play an expansive style of football. But I think uh, the style that we're going to play this year is going to be very similar. But I think we're going to try and build on that expansion once again and try and play a little bit more uh, expansive once again and try and, you know, play football that want, people want to see. And that, that's not one-out football, but football which promotes the football and uh, see a lot of ball movement and hopefully a lot of tries because we've got a lot of speed in our back line and uh, a lot of skillful forwards. So hopefully we're going to play a very attractive style of football for the fans. From your point of view again, gained great notoriety in the code uh, as, a, as a winger. Uh, latter stage of your career you've been used a lot more in the centres. You, you relish that? Enjoy that? Getting your hands on the footy more and, and the physical tough stuff in defence? Yeah, it's good. I enjoy the centres and you know probably my favourite position is fullback. But you know, we've got Kirk Gidley, he was you know, probably one of the best fullbacks in the game or is the best fullback. So you know, them days are gone where I, I get to play fullback. But I enjoy the centres. I think uh, the wing now is a very hard position. In some ways I'm probably glad not to be on the wing, you know. 
if uh, we make an error in defence in the centres, you know, it's the wingers fault if they don't fix it for us. So <laughs> it's a tough old job out there. They've uh, got to, you know, do the hard runs when no one else wants to do them and take the bombs. And us centres, we just stand out there next to the big back rails and they make us look good. Speaking of you playing fullback, I've got to take my memory back here. When you were playing for the Rabbitohs against the West Tigers, you created a world record for kick returns at it. Was it 3,000 metres or something? Yeah, no. Are you still a world record holder? Oh, I think I am, but it was a good day, you know. It was obviously just one of them days where, you know, they seem to, uh, you know, guys seem to sort of, um, you know, get out of the way for me, and I was lucky enough to have a great day. So it was a good day at fullback, and as I said, I love playing fullback. It was, you know, a great opportunity to get the footy in your hands and, uh, you know, something I really relished. And, um, you know, as I said, I'll just play wherever it's best for the team, and at the moment, Santa seems to be in that spot. And the real reason Wendell retired is he running scared? No, I think, um, you know, he would have been disappointed to retire, but they've got some great wingers there uh, waiting in the wings, some younger guys who obviously uh, Wayne felt, you know, it was probably their time. So, you know, it's disappointing to see Wendell go. He's a great character and uh, it's unfortunate we don't have as many guys with as much character as him in the game at the moment, but uh, we're not going to miss him. I'm sure he's going to get his head on TV every opportunity he gets. So. Rick Stone has been a part of the Newcastle Knights for several years and served his apprenticeship under the likes of Michael Hagan and Brian Smith. The Newcastle Knights' new mentor has impressed all and sundry thus far in his brief NRL coaching career and he's primed for a massive season. Yeah, it's been enjoyable, absolutely. We've got a couple of new coaches which have changed a few things around, not massively in our structure, but um, the boys have really enjoyed their work and, and particularly since Christmas, I reckon, have picked up their intensity and, and looking forward to getting the game now. Can you tell us about the changes? You've alluded to uh, a couple of staff members that have changed. Uh, what, how has that impacted? I think it's been a positive thing. You know, we've had the same sort of coaches with Brian Smith for a couple of years now. And we've been working the similar sort of shape and a similar sort of uh, attacking style. We've slightly tinkered with that. And um, we've got Andrew Duneman who's involved with our attack at the moment. And um, he's um, been a, a journeyman, I suppose, rugby league player, but definitely um, a coach in the making and has been involved with the Northern Pride in the Queensland Cup for the last couple of years. And um, he, he's come in and been a massive hit straight away. And Craig Sandercox, another person we've brought in who's been involved with Manly for a long, long time and um, yeah, bringing some expertise to our coaching panel. I know that you're very much your own man. I asked Kurt Gidley earlier in today's program whether he can see a bit of Michael Hagan, a bit of Brian Smith in some of the things that you do. What about from your own point of view? Would you, would you say that there are certain aspects of, of what you learned when you're working with them that is in your coaching stock? Well, absolutely. There's no doubt that you learn most at the coalface involved with the rugby league side at the highest level, which is the NRL. Um, you know, took plenty from Hagues in the short time that I was with him for a year and obviously had a massive influence under Brian Smith in the last three years. So there's, there's plenty of those two coaches that have um, probably moulded my thinking and the way I go about it. But you like to think you've got your own personality and, and, you, and you probably don't try and change for the players, you know, the players will see through that, so stick into the own personality and make sure you be yourself as much as you can is important, I think. You got your dream shot last year, what was the biggest thing you learned in your debut season? Yeah, well, I suppose it was hard, not really a debut season, it was about four or five games. Uh, yeah, the pressure every week obviously is, is something that you know, I suppose um, I'll, I'll have to handle this year. There's no doubt about that. It's been, um, you know, a full off season. And I think I learned a little bit more about that short time around game day. Obviously, this was a new frontier for me, uh, mapping out and programming a whole pre-season and off season. And I uh, really enjoyed working with Lee Clark, who's obviously, you know, um, you know, really good for our club. And he's got a great rapport with the players as well. So, yeah, looking forward to get back into the games and really get in some hardcore coaching. We've often said on the program, and, and people that obviously know their rugby league, well understand that it's a fantastic time of year to be a head coach without the expectation week in week out of winning but the days can be nonetheless fairly long can't they? Yeah, they can be long and, and tedious and, you know, with players being full-time now, I suppose we expect plenty out of them. We've been training um, pretty much a Monday to Friday type schedule. Um, we have down days on Tuesday and Thursday and our Monday, Wednesday and Friday are pretty big days. We've given boys the majority of their weekends off because obviously their weekends are taken up once the season starts. So I think they've been enjoying that and they're coming to train and pretty fresh and, and ready to go. And you'll see a little bit today that shows that, you know, they're excited to be here. Not a lot has happened in terms of, uh, of recruitment uh, at the Knights and indeed in terms of the losses, not, not a lot happening there when compared to other clubs either. Uh, I take it that you're comfortable with, with that scenario and you believe you've got the right uh, depth in the key positions and the right blend of youth and experience? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, we've, we've added Ivan Tunavava, who's obviously experienced front row. He actually is our most experienced front rower now uh, since he's come from the Warriors, played 100 games and played for his country, and he's only 25. So he comes with a wealth of experience and, and obviously knowing his role. Um, I think we've got to get the improvement out of our, our younger players and our evolving players. I, I still believe there's sort of 10, 15 to 20% improvement in some of our players, and if we can find a little bit of that in everyone, particularly our younger generation of players, with the experience and just a number of games um, under their belt, I think you know we'll be competitive again. There he is, head coach here at the Newcastle Knights, Rick Stone, our guest on Rugby League Summertime. Let's now take a look at the club's gains and losses. It won't take long because there are not too many of them in the gains department. In comes the Warriors, Evan Tumavave. In the losses department, Danny Wicks, obviously, and Luke McDougall, who has linked up with the Melbourne Storm. Now look at the pre-season trials. The first two trials, you'd have to call fairly low-key ones. The 13th of February, the Knights will face the Newcastle representative side at Nelson Bay. You'd imagine that Coach Rick Stone will use plenty of young troops on that occasion. And likewise, the following week, when the Newcastle Knights face the Melbourne Storm under-20s, that match to be played at St John Oval at Charlestown. And then the club's major hit out in pre-season terms. It's 27th of February to tackle the Panthers, that match being played in Port Macquarie. Do thank you for your company. Hope you've enjoyed this look behind the scenes at the Newcastle Knights on today's episode of Rugby League Summertime. We'll see you on the program next week. Take care. back with sport and relief for a couple of NRL clubs after the All-Stars game. Yeah, they are relieved, although, Deb, the Knights will still be without Kurt Gidley for a little while. Details next. Newcastle captain Kurt Gidley is set to miss the start of the NRL season after scans confirmed he suffered knee ligament damage in Saturday night's All-Stars clash. Better news for Broncos skipper Darren Lockyer. His bicep injury turned out to be just a cork. He thought his season was over. But scans on Kurt Gidley's injured knee soon lifted his spirits. It's almost like getting picked in a rip too. I'm excited. Uh, no, no damage to the cruise ship, which was the main one. So, um, yeah, very good news. But the night skipper will miss round one against Canterbury. It could have been worse, though. To steer down the barrel at, at a whole season being out is, um, is something that every player feared. And we'll have the latest on the injury to the night star, Kurt Gidley. Knights captain Kurt Gidley is resting a little easier tonight after scans cleared him of what was feared to be a season-ending knee injury. Gidley was hurt in the All-Stars match on Saturday. He's now expected to be out for between six and four weeks with a hamstring problem. Sport now with Joanna Griggs, and it's been a long couple of days for some of the NRL's biggest stars. Yes, Griggs, there were some serious injury concerns following the All-Star game, but it's good news all round. We'll have the details shortly. There's major relief for the NRL with two of the league's biggest stars cleared of serious injury after the All-Star game. In Newcastle, they were sweating on scans on Knights captain Kurt Gidley. They showed a hamstring tear and not a season-ending knee injury. He could be fit for round one action. It's almost like getting picked in a rip too. I'm excited. Uh, no, no damage to the cruise ship, which was the main one. So, um, yeah, very good news. Just a week and a half out from the start of the league season and one player is already in serious trouble. Danny Weidler joins us now from NRL headquarters. Danny, what's happened? Well, Pete, following drug supply charges against Danny Wicks, his teammate and former housemate, Chris Houston, is now facing three charges of supplying ecstasy and one of supplying cocaine. Now, this is a major blow for the Knights. The players were called into a meeting, a sudden meeting, late today to be told of the news that that Houston would be indefinitely suspended from the club. Now, Pete, this isn't just some player who the Knights were hoping might be a good player. He's an outstanding player. He was on standby for State of Origin last year. So this is a major, major blow for Newcastle and Rugby League. Indeed. Danny, thank you. The Newcastle Knights tear up the contract of drug suspect Chris Houston. 
The Newcastle Knights have torn up the contract of star forward Chris Houston after he was charged with dealing cocaine and ecstasy. He joins former housemate Danny Wicks on the sidelines, accused of being part of a major drug ring. Our crime reporter Daniel Sutton is at Knights headquarters in Newcastle. Dan, what's the club had to say today? Well, Deb, publicly at least, the Newcastle Knights are saying very little. There was a crisis meeting here overnight where players and staff were informed about the charges that were pending against Halston, and today they trained without him, although players were under strict instructions not to speak to the media and to focus on football. Even the coach had very little to say. Now, Halston has gone to ground two. There was no answer at his Newcastle home today, but his future was confirmed at lunchtime today in a letter to sponsors from Knights boss Steve Thurston. Now, in it, he confirmed that Halston had offered his resignation, it had been accepted, and that the club had decided to tear up his contract. Now, on the field, that will be a big blow to the Newcastle Knights, and fans know it. We're losing too many good plays. <laughs> we just got to try our best and hope the boys do a good job for us. But I can't blame the club. Who do you I blame, blame the individual himself. And there's more bad news tonight on the sponsorship front. Blue Tongue Breweries, worth $800,000 a year to the Knights, has told 10 News in a statement it's extremely disappointed by recent developments at the Newcastle Knights and is currently reviewing its sponsorship with the club. Now, NIB, another sponsor, has also demanded action from the club, saying it's concerned about the potential damage to the company's own reputation. Deb? Now, here's Stephanie with all the sport. Thanks, Pete. We'll head to Rugby League news first, where the Newcastle Knights are a club in crisis, the latest drug allegations plummeting them into favouritism for the wooden spoon. And according to the club chairman, the ongoing troubles are beginning to take their toll. Knights players tried to carry on as normal today, but the latest drug scandal to hit the club is hurting the players and the coach. No it's disappointing that the furor that surrounds these charges, um, they chip away at the fabric of the club. The drug charge tally stands at two. Last year, Danny Wicks and now Chris Houston. But the club says they don't have a problem. I dispute there's a drug culture in this club. The Knights are the captain's pick for the wooden spoon, but not all see their drug dramas as doom and gloom. As much as they test you, they can really pull you um, together a lot tighter. And staying with league, Newcastle forward Chris Houston quit the NRL club this afternoon in the wake of his drug supply charges. Chief Executive Steve Burriston says the Knights are handling the scandal and he believes sponsors will stick by them. We're confident we'll deal with each of these issues as they come up. Hopefully there are no more. Um, I was hoping there'd be no more after Danny Wick, so I'm not going to say that. Now to Stephanie with all the sports, Steph. Thanks, Pete. Well, we'll first head to a developing story on the Newcastle Knights following the drug allegations levelled against Danny Wicks and Chris Houston. And joining me from NRL headquarters is Nines League reporter Danny Widler. Danny, what is the latest? Steph, I spoke to the Knights boss, Steve Burris, a short time ago. He told me he wants to try and bring Danny Badiris back to play for the Knights, even though he's got a contract in England. He also wants to try and recruit Sonny Bill Williams, even though Williams has a ban from playing in the NRL. So that'll be very, very interesting. The Knights' most loyal fans are sticking solid in the wake of the club's drug dramas. Patrick Mollahan, 7 News. <laughs> Verbal warfare in the NRL. Channel 9 boss David Gingell has hit out at league CEO David Gallup for publicly supporting a new footy show hosted by Matty Johns on Channel 7. Now, Gallup says it's in the NRL's best interest for Johns' new show to be a success. But Gingell accuses Gallup of gross disloyalty after Channel 9 spent uh, $50 million a year to broadcast the game. I think David Gingell is being ridiculous. Uh, disloyalty is not a nice word. David Gallup is loyal. He's loyal to the game of rugby. Look, yes. it always has been. One would have thought. And what a dream when Australia's number one television network at the moment, Channel 7, comes along and says, we want to get involved with the game. But did, did David, was David asked for an opinion? David after the issued interview. an opinion. Yeah, no, yeah. This no, was, well, yeah. Well, it, when it he was based on Gallup's, Gallup's opinion, though. Well, well, they, they sought his opinion, and yeah. he said, and he said, oh, I hope it's great. It's good to yeah. see Matty back. Yeah. I can't really see anything wrong with that. Yeah, you're right. Although I, no. tend to, I if it was cricket, 
I, I, James Sutherland wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have. He, he wouldn't have uh, put supported it. what a cricket show on seven. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the cricket. But boss, hang on, hang on. What if someone had, had said to him, you know, what do you think about so and so's new cricket show on Channel Seven? Well, would he say, he, do what he say? I'd rather not comment at the moment. So or? money buys loyalty oh, in cricket. Oh, oh, I think. I think the television rights issue is is absolutely huge. But I think yes, what David Gingell has done is given it a nice free kick. People who didn't know about it certainly know about it now. It's up in lights, isn't it? And that's the gamble you take. Yeah. When yeah, you attack looking, something, you publicise it. And they're giving fifty million dollars to the NRL, and we know how competitive it is. Like that's like, for example, yep. athletics. Okay. Hey, hey, hey! hey. They, they're, they're not giving it to them. It's in return so for the right. rights Stop to the it. rugby league. Some people would say if Coke was your sponsor, that's like some saying, "Geez, I love that Pepsi." Pepsi. It's like you know, athletics. So you, you Optus, would, and then you no say, "Go and use Telstra phones." I think you've got oh, a, see, a, a, a confusing issue issues here. If someone sticks a microphone in front of David Gallup's mouth and says, mm -hmm. "So, what do you think about the thing?" Well, he knows what Matty Johns has done yeah. for the game over the last I think few it's years. Been blown out of proportion. And I just think that what's, he can't say no comment. He basically says, oh, well, it's nice to see Matty back and good luck with the show. Speaking What's of... What's wrong saying that? The Johns boys, revelations uh, which a few of us have known this about for some time, that they, they don't speak anymore, which That's is horrible, unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, and Tracy Look, back... Look, just back in the days when they were gay there, that photo. <laughs> but, uh, but listen, oh, that's, uh, that is... Uh, well, I heard a couple of weeks ago that the boys weren't talking and I thought... What a bummer that something like that. But it's like hard that, that it's in the media now still, and you know, their calls are being made to the parents, and like I think that family or sibling issues are hard enough, let alone it being played out in the media. I just say let them alone, it, and hopefully it'll sort out. It is. No, I think Gibbo, I'm sensing that it's really heavily involved with Channel Nine. With uh, who were actually dirty on Matty Johns, yes. I think they might have supported him financially through his crisis. Through his crisis, crisis. Yep. yep. And then he's left them to go on to Channel Seven. That's right. Whereas Andrew stayed with Nine, mm. and Matthew feels that Andrew didn't give him the support that he deserved. But it's a very, I mean, one thing that we all, I guess, have known and probably haven't spoken a lot about, but. Matthew went to hell over this thing, the sexual assault charges. Like, he just disappeared. Mates were ringing him up for Oh, yeah. There were people, there were people were very concerned about uh, Matty's welfare. And, um, but, I don't know, this is... The fact that the two brothers, who've been such great mates, played together... Yeah, you know, they were the story. They were the story of the Newcastle Knights, and they're both lovely guys. Yeah, and hopefully it'll sort itself out. Excellent, mm. absolutely. I'll go around there and see them, Mike, if they don't sort it out. Well, the Knights have had a uh, troubled build-up to the new season, but it's about getting the job done on the field. And they made the finals last year, Dell, but many are tipping that they'll struggle in 2010. Yeah, look, I think it's unfortunate the start they've had to the season, um, you know, with their recruiting. But they're a tough culture, you know. They've been through the Andrew John stuff. Um, and they'll pull together. I just know they will. Kurt Gidley, in the All-Stars game, I was pretty shattered for uh, Kurt Gidley, mm. but Corey Patterson, I think, is going to be a shining light from this year. Mm. Um, and, you know, the community will get behind this team. Um, they've got some great players there. My mate Mad Dog's still running around. Hopefully he plays more than 12 <laughs> games this year. Um, <laughs> you know. And uh, I'll tell you what's exciting. I mean, obviously, I love my outside backs. So, Uyate. He's an exciting yeah. young Fijian flyer. You know, he's like a young Lodi Dikiri. What's his name? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Uyate. Uyate. Yeah. And Fair Joey enough. Johns had a massive rattle a couple of years ago, so... Just changed his name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what do you call him? Uyate. Oh, Uyate. I call yeah. Uyate. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. That's what we do. That's oh, cool. Let's, let's Mark move on. Tafua, too. I reckon he's a good kid. Let's... The Knights have star appeal in Gidley and Mullen, but the well-documented loss of Wicks and Houston could be too big a hurdle. I think they're going to find it very, very tough given what's happened off field. You really need a good preparation for this competition and, and they haven't had it. No, they love their football up there and they're going to hate me up there, but I think those uh, poor old Knights are going to get that wooden spoon. Adam Hawes, 10 News. The man who's trying to uh, string this Newcastle side together, of course, is their coach, Rick Stone. Let's hear from him now. Well, Rick, it's been a difficult pre-season for the Knights, but how have the players and the coaching staff been able to focus on the job at hand, which is to play football? I think our focus has probably been a little bit more acute, really. Um, it's, it's made us definitely concentrate on football, concentrate on the things we can control, and I think everyone's done that and looking forward to this weekend. Talking about the football, it was a successful season for the Newcastle Knights last year, finishing in seventh position. What areas of your game do you need to get right to go that next step? Probably our away record to start with. We won three out of 12 away. I suppose it starts with our first away game here. Uh, I'll probably think us handling um, pressure, continuous pressure as a young side. I didn't think we handled pressure too well. And obviously the dogs are going to put plenty on that 
uh, on us tonight like that. So how we handle that particular pressure and how we come through that and what we can do at the back end of after handling that pressure will be important for us. You had a few games in charge of Newcastle last year, but you had your first off-season in charge of the Newcastle Knights. Can we expect anything different from them in 2010? Um, I'd like to think we could see a little bit more questions in attack when we get down the opposition's end. We've fine-tuned our attack a little bit. I'd like to think our D can improve still somewhat, but the evolution of Newcastle's attack's been a couple of years incoming, and I'd like to think we can, we can add something to what we've been doing in the last couple of years. All the best tonight and all the best in 2010. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, he's only ever coached five games in the NRL, of course, Rick Stone, after taking over from Brian Smith at the back end of the 2009 season at the Newcastle Knights. He's been given a very tough job to try and cobble this team together for 2010. We'll wait and see how it pans out. First up tonight, boys against the Bulldogs. And, uh, well, if they don't win tonight, their fans will be wondering what's going on. But I think for mine, they'll get the cash pretty comfortably. Well, as we uh, mentioned before, the Knights have had a troubled start to their 2010 season. Let's hear what the fans are saying in the lead-up to tonight's game. Uh, uh, some fans are now with Renee. All right, it's been a tumultuous off-season for the Newcastle Knights with two players resigning and Kurt Gidley getting a rare hamstring injury. And then, of course, that's adding all to Rick Stone's woes. But the Newcastle Knights always back their team as well too, so this shouldn't hamper their season too much. And, of course, everyone's backing them as the wooden spoon favourites. So let's go and have a chat to the fans, the one who have backed them the whole way through, and see what they think. We've got the same team as last year and we, we went very well last year. And we were the only team last year to beat both the Dragons and the Bulldogs. I think they're going to come over and they're going to be at eighth position. I put money on that at the TAB, eighth position. Give Vern on the wing. He should run over Fitch Ice for us. Oh, look, we've, we've got some players that have come back from long term injury as well, so hopefully we should be able to cover those that we've lost. Um, and then it's just going to be a matter of whether they've got their head screwed on, I guess. Yeah, I think Bulldogs are not the only team that are unique in being able to come from you know, controversy to win things. But uh, it's very disappointing for them. It uh, makes the year start very lousy. Now, obviously, we'll hear later on, Joey, how you worked with the Knights this week and basically steered them home. But That's to right. me, it was just confirmation again last night at ANZ that if you turn up with better attitude and you're more committed to the, the task, yeah. you'll win. And I, and I thought that was the difference. I thought that sums it up perfectly. They're more committed, especially the forwards. The forwards were so committed and aggressive and it paved the way for Mullen and, and Corey Patterson to, to cause havoc on the edge. Um, really proud of the guys. It's, it's been a tough off-season for the Knights, but it speaks volumes for the individuals, for the spirit of the club, and also the coach, Rick Stone. Yeah, congratulations. Only sixth game in charge, mm. I think, and uh, it, it's almost a baptism of fire for Rick Stone up there. Remarkable indeed. You think that if Jamal Idris had that play again, he would come up with a different option. It would have been an injustice, I think, over the course of the game for the Knights to have got beaten. They got home by four. There were doubles for both Morris and Turner for the Dogs, but Vuna, Duarte, Sao and Tafua, who raced 50 metres to score, got the four-pointers for the Knights. And, Joey, look, you know, everyone knows, well documented how, how tough the off-season has yeah. been. No Danny Wicks and no Chris yeah. House in there. Now, last night I thought there were standouts in Corey Patterson and Ben Cross. Yeah. If you put them with Dan Taylor and Cameron Serraldo, those four big men only played 24 games between them last yeah. year. So if they can make a contribution this year, all of a sudden you know, it might not be so dire up there up front. Yeah, well, exactly. Up front, I thought not only were they passionate and committed, they were skillful. Some of the short passing and, and the agility they showed was outstanding, but... That's where I need the big men up front to, to weigh them up. That's where they need him. But last night, you know, I couldn't have been any more proud of the guys. I, I, I didn't give them a shot. I thought I didn't think they'd get, I didn't think they'd get near them. But, <laughs> that's being honest. But um, yeah, it was a great win for the club. It's well, sensational. You didn't work with them this week. Uh, can you stay away from them in the coming weeks? <laughs> they might be a chance. Of course, no Kurt Gidley there last night. Great win for the Newcastle Knights as was the case for the Panthers up at CUA Stadium. And we'll come back and have a look at the other nights, other matches played last night. But first, let's get the reaction out of the sheds from ANZ last night. Only one game, first of the season. But was that win a bit bigger than one game? Yeah, I probably think so. After, yeah, probably the last month or so. Uh, we've been copping a little bit. So um, it was really important for us to, to play well today. Like the, the result sort of went our way in the end, which was great. But we really wanted to go out and play well. Right from the first hit out with uh, Ben Hannett, big hit, and then took another big hit in the second half. How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. I think half a brain cell out the field. I'm just about to go out there and find it. But, um, yeah, I think it bumped off Ben and we got, had a pretty good tussle out there tonight. It was good. Most pundits tip you for the wooden spoon. Gidley out, McDougall out. Your backs were certainly against the wall. 
Yeah, certainly were. Obviously, um, the performance that we showed today showed there's plenty of resolve in this footy club. Um, great to get a win. Probably not as pretty as we, we could have had it, particularly at the end of the game, but two points is two points, and we're moving on the next week. The little move. No, no, let's move on to Aku Yati. Who? What? And his move for Newcastle on the right wing last night on Heck and Then I. Uh, how good is this? Oh. Just look, watch it, watch, and, watch and, and, and learn. Any winger out there who's watching the, the show at the moment, this is just bang, bang, Nick Lang. Look, oop. <laughs> Round he goes and Heck and Then I, poor bugger. Reminded me of Chicka Ferguson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Johnny Ferguson, who played for. Uh, Played for Newdown and played for the Canberra Raiders. He could do that. He could tap dance on a sixpence, you know, just bang, mm. off they'd go. Beat got, him easy. Got to say, there's been no worse story during the off-season than the Newcastle Knights, unfortunately, mm. with their dramas off the footy field. There's, oh, been, yes, no, there's been no better what story about, about, of the opening weekend than their victory, the Newcastle Knights' victory last night. They're a and, good side. Yeah. <laughs> good side. They are a good side. So you look at that back line, you know, the, the, the prototype body shape that they are and the speed and the strength that they've got. Still got Gidley to come back mm. yet. You know, Absolutely. Adam they, McDougall was a late withdrawal as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, there's been big money for them to win the wooden spoon because everyone thinks, oh, there's going to be more drama up there. If they win the wooden spoon, I will walk to Newcastle. Yeah. For, they're, they're better than half the teams in this competition. <laughs> Easy. <coughs> F3. Well, yeah, if, if they, if the they wouldn't win the wooden spoon, you're doing what? I will walk to Newcastle for tragedy, uh, for charity. <laughs> it will be a tragedy, but I will walk to Newcastle and, and for charity. Over what, over what time frame? You'll just go non-stop? You know what? I'll go non-stop, won't sleep. I'll Gus, I want Straight you to know, with you. Well, I want you to know, I'll be in the van supporting you all the way. So no you problem. want a pie, Gus? Yeah. I'd put a rider on that if I was you, Gus, if there's no further dramas to come no, out of the investigation. No, 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 they'll still ride, mate. Newcastle is a footballing... They're a, tough, they're a footballing town. They will find someone to replace whoever goes. Oh, yeah. you know? so have you seen and the hill coming up from Mooney Mooney? <laughs> out I don't care, I'll take it in my stride. I know, you know, and, 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 and you know, the two boys that are out at the moment have got their drama, but had yeah. they been out injured, you wouldn't have been writing sure. Newcastle off the way we wrote mm. them off yesterday. True, sure. You wrote them off because of the drama during the off-season. It gelled them together. Newcastle is a great rugby league town. They will not win the wooden spoon. No. If you just talk football, Kurt Gidley's a lot bigger loss than Chris Houston and Danny Wicks going to match. You lose Kurt times. Gidley, he's their star player. Man, and without him for if Wicks and months. Houston were out injured for game one, yeah. Newcastle wouldn't have been written off yep. the way they were written off before that game was today. And I think, I think psychologically, the Canterbury might have been expecting a little bit of emotion from them, mm. but not the skill and the speed and the precision the that they showed. The halves played well, they ran into their holes, their angle running was really good. It was the Newcastle we saw tear sides apart mm. last year. And finally from the game last night, for all that we've said about the match, it boiled down to one play oh, yeah. close to full time and Newcastle Knights have to say to Shannon McDonald. Thanks, mate. No. What a save this one. The dog don't kick. Yeah, the dog don't kick. You know what? I'm, I'm coaching again on the 15 side at the moment, and the biggest problem I have is seeing kids being kick happy because they see their first grade stars being kick yeah. happy. If Look, I know it's uh, in, in hindsight, but if Jamal just holds the ball here, he pushes the young uh, McDonald away yep. like a fly, he scores a try. Yep. We've been, as young fellas, we're being taught to kick way too much on the fourth, fifth, and they think that if they kick, a try, if they kick for a try, they might get extra points where well, you don't. Do you think Mel Meninga would have kicked? <laughs> Do you Bre think no. Greg Inglis would have kicked? Brett Plowman. You know, they, Gaznia wouldn't have kicked. I mean, when those outside backs get out in the backfield, they back themselves, mm. and that's what he's got to do. And that's a 2016. Look, yeah. he, he's... And he's had a he's, kick to win the match yes, from the sideline. Oh, oh, oh. Would have nailed it. He would have got Would have nailed it. He you, you wouldn't be going crook. I'm not going crook. I was just making <laughs> a little comparison line. between Leave round one last year. He's, yeah. he's still line. a kid. He's one year out of school. Idris. Yeah. He doesn't look like a kid, but he's going to learn. Right. But McDonald would have said, please kick, oh, please kick, yeah. please exactly. kick. Exactly. And then he got a great bounce. It was a very impressive performance from Newcastle. It's hard to imagine uh, what the players and the club and the supporters have been through in the off-season, but they rose to the challenge yesterday and defeated the Bulldogs, a team that was, uh, well, a try away from uh, being minor premiers last year and going neck to head-to-head -to -head, uh, with St George Illawarra. So terrific stuff from Newcastle. Jared Mullen was outstanding. Stuart Raper caught up with him after the game yesterday. Well, a great performance there, uh, Jared. They got them back. At, they come back at the end, but at the end of the day, you were too good for them. Yeah, mate. Lucky enough, we got a few points to sort of hold them out there. But uh, uh, typical dogs, mate. They always come back at you, and we know they're going to be tough. And mate, just a good credit to our boys. You know, I've been through a lot this off season. It's good to get a win first up. I was going to say it was a very tough off season for you. A lot of off field dramas, but uh, there would have been a lot of belief within your camp. Mate, definitely. And, you know, everyone's writing us off and. Probably good for us, mate. It uh, takes a lot of pressure off us, and uh, mate, we know we've got the players here to do the job, and uh, 
No, was, like I said, it was good to get the win and um, you know, hopefully back it up next week. I thought you had a great game plan, hit the edge as well, and your kicking game was excellent. It wasn't too bad, a bit scratchy there in the second half, but no, first first uh, game of the year and um, can always uh, pick up on that. All right, Jared, thanks very much. Thanks, Jared. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Jared Mullen, what a player he is. A terrific performance last night for Newcastle. And Newcastle put their off season dramas behind them. He gives it to Junior Sal, beating the highly fancy Bulldogs by four. I think there was plenty of resolve in that performance. Michael Innes missing all four conversion attempts. You're talking a foot either way on three kicks that if, if they happen to go through him, I'm will has them who. But he may have bigger problems after this tackle. I'd like to think the judiciary will have a serious look at that through the week. Paul Cochran for Sports Tonight. Last night, the Knights put their off-field dramas to one side to cause a massive upset. The Sharks' Trent Barrett was sin bin for repeated infringements in his team's 14-10 loss to the Storm. The Panthers led all the way against the Raiders, while the Knights defeated the highly fancied Bulldogs 20 to 16. No one south of the F3 freeway had given the troubled Knights a chance against the Dogs. Two tries in 16 minutes, enough to make people believe. Another took it to 16-0, which was the half-time score. The Dogs finally yelping with half an hour left on the clock. Mark Tafua showed some toe to take the lead back to 16. Not the killer blow, two four-pointers to Turner and a second to Morris, the gap was just four. But the comeback had something missing. No Hazem El Masri. And it stays out. Now you're talking a foot. If they happen to go through everyone's home, well, Hazem who? Battered and bruised today, there's finally relief for Newcastle. From 20 to 6 down, the Dogs scored the last three tries, but the Knights held on to win. To come off the field having played well and knowing that you haven't let your mate down was, was the key for us. Matt Carmichael, 7 News. Well, let's go downstairs right now to Gary Belcher. They are a very good football team, the Melbourne Storm. I thought the better team in the first half but for most of it was uh, the Knights. Jared, uh, I guess you'd say that's one that got away. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, we need a storm to come back at us and... Uh... You know, it's all like last week against the Dogs, which, uh, you know, we need to sort of put sides away, but credit them, they come back well. You really exported their left side defence. You pinpointed that before the game? Yeah, mate, definitely. Excuse me. Yeah, mate, definitely. But, um, you know, worked a couple of times there, but didn't go there enough. And, uh, like I said, the guys in the end, mate, a bit disappointed. Yeah, all that ball you had late in the second half, it, it, uh, it just couldn't crack, crack it. They are such a strong defensive team on their line. Yeah, they screen real well, and uh, that's why, you know, they're, they're uh, world champions. So, uh, now we'll learn from this experience and hopefully bounce back to well. All right, mate. Thanks very much for that. Yeah, another great performance from Newcastle. But we come to expect that an outstanding effort from Melbourne to get the money under all sorts of pressure. And this was the reaction out of both sheds. Rick, was that the one that got away? Yeah, I think so. You know, we had enough football to score a few more tries in the second half and we couldn't quite get there. You know, full credit to Storm. They got some championship qualities there and they showed them again today. But um, our execution wasn't quite as good as it needed to be. And realistically, you know, when the possession is that lopsided down that end of the field, you need to take those games. Well, let's have a look at an attacking you know play I mean? from a a scrum. Scrum. Let's have a look at last night True. Newcastle inside their own 10, sixth minute of the game and they turn it on, it's good league, it's good footy. There's some hope, there's some hope for the scrum that you've just put the bullet in, Gus. Yes. There's some hope. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not convinced. So Corey Patterson was in the centres then, he's a the second rower, so you have to yeah. say, mate, back you go. I'm not convinced. So you're 10 metres out from your own line with a scrum feed in the old days, you had to have your forwards in the scrum, otherwise the other mob would push it off you and mm. you'd have to defend. I mean, you know, I, I don't get I don't get the modern scrum. I'm not saying the, the old I mean the old scrums were fun, but I don't want to I don't want to go I don't want to go I don't want to go back there, but the modern scrums leave me cold. Corey Patterson and, and Billy Slater last night, a bit of a it was a fairly verbal stouse that wasn't just a little one, it went on through plays at both ends of the ground, TK. Can you shed any light as to what was going on in Bill of this? I've got the big ears, but not big enough to know what was actually said by Billy Slater, who does love turning the screws a little bit on the opposing players, but there's been plenty of drama up at Newcastle with something dropped regarding that drama. I'm not too sure, but Billy didn't take one backward step, and it did, as you mentioned, go out on right throughout it. Have a look at this. A few minutes later, down the other end of the field, there's no reason for it to blow up again here, but it does. Here we go. We're off again. <laughs> And I think Billy did say something along the lines of you can dish it out but you can't take it or something along those lines here. Well, I haven't seen one like this for quite some time. It's an ongoing contest, isn't it? Mm. But, yeah, Billy's always there. Mm. I, I mean, 
I hope something wasn't said about um, Corey Patterson's depression that he mm -hmm. suffered from. I hope that wasn't. I hope that wasn't what was said. But I, knowing Billy Slater, I don't think it would have been. Um, if it was, that's a low blow, and that shouldn't be a tolerate on the field. Saying that, you, once you're on the field um, and your public life is public, you're open to all type of scrutiny. So I, I would have imagined that Billy Slater maybe said something about what's gone on in Newcastle over the last two or three months. Mm -hmm. well, well, I hope he did anyway. <laughs>
Anyway, that Joey says like a real jerk. Webby, <laughs> let's go. Hey, pal. Wait, tell me about Newcastle way. How was the show, Matty? Oh, it was a shambles. I was terrific. But Webkey and Jason Stevens. Oh, sorry, mate. Just phone call. Just phone call. Joey. Oh, thanks, pal. Oh, thank you, mate. Oh, hey. Any vacancies at Channel 7? <laughs> Maybe I think it's a pretty full ship at the moment. I tell you, when we catch up next week, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yes, we'll catch up next week. Mate, I promise. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a, a real test for them this weekend because you take on a Newcastle side yeah. that have been very good the first couple of weeks. Uh, too good for the dogs. Got away against Melbourne. Looked like they might hang on, but they've been very, very competitive. And we sent the greatest night in Andrew Johns to see how the boys are feeling in camp this week. I'm up here at Newcastle. We've had a great start to the season. Big win over the dogs and probably should have beat the Melbourne Storm here last Saturday night. Just going to ask the guys what the secret is. The start of the season, big win against Bulldogs and then probably should have won last week. Uh, what's been the secret? Mate, so I just think everyone believing in each other and um, sort of the unity we got at the Knights and, uh, you know, everyone sticking together through these tough times, so hopefully we can get a win this weekend. And your combination with Jared Mullen, growing by the game? Yeah, I think so. I think still got plenty to work on, but, um, yeah, getting there. The hamstring, how long? Yeah, it's come along all right at the moment, sort of maybe two or three weeks to go, I think, but, um, yeah, stinging to get out there. How do you think the... Um the debate between Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott went. <laughs> I wrote, so I put a status up on Facebook today and just said it was that boring and I fell asleep and just watching it. That, no, I reckon that um, Tony's a bit too harsh, you reckon? Why is that? I don't know, he's just, looks like he just wants to jump over the table and want to punch Kevin in the head. Now you had a few games last year to get, to get used to it. Really, this is your, your debut year as a first grade coach. How are you finding the pressure? Yeah, not too bad, you know. It's kind yeah. of a grace, Tony. Mate, I've always been great. Don't worry about that. I'll be losing my hair next. But um, enjoying it, mate. Enjoying the challenge, absolutely. Uh, got some new staff, enjoying working with them. And uh, the boys have been really responsive and really happy the way things are going. Obviously, there's a long way to go. and got plenty of work to do. You've been knocked out twice. How, how is the head? Yeah, it's all good, mate. I mean, lose me marbles out there a couple of times, but I uh, got the scan today. Not many to lose. <laughs> it's all good, mate. Uh, the melon's all right, mate. Just a uh, few head knocks. Can I give you a tip? Don't leave with your chin. You've been leading with your head. Oh, mate, I'll get the bumpers up. Last week, Greg Inglis, Mark and Greg Inglis, you swapped sides to do that. You love the big challenge. Oh, yeah, it's always good to play good players, mate. And, um, you know, he's arguably the best player in the game. So um, as you get older and uh, lose more hair, which isn't possible for me, mate, um, it's harder week in and week out to get yourself mentally up for a game and uh, no bigger challenge than playing great players. And what about this weekend against the Eagles? Boys up for it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, they've had two, two rough losses, I suppose. They've, they could have won both games, so it's going to be a big game for, for both teams. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thanks mate. mate. <laughs> it should be a very good game there. The Seagulls looking for their first win of the year, taking on the Knights up at Blue Tongue Stadium. It's on at 7.30 uh, at night. Uh, I think the Seagulls, look, they've had a couple of 20 points to lead. They can't possibly get to that lead again and squander it. I, I think they'll be winning this one against the Knights. Yeah, I agree, and um, we wish them all the best. They love Blue Tongue up there. They've won all four games. Now, yes. it's time for Around the Grounds with Andrew Boss. Yeah. Yeah. Can you really get away with that? From this week, one of the biggest stories of the week, certainly sledging. That's been one of the issues of the week after this blow-up uh, last weekend between Billy Slater and Corey Patterson in the match on uh, Saturday night up in Newcastle. Now, it's been revealed what was said and there's been arguments on what is crossing the line on the football field, what is said in the heat of battle. In the end, no action taken against Billy Slater. He shook hands with Corey Patterson at the end of the game. He's apologised. He's rung Corey Patterson during the week. I thought we should get the word from the National Rugby League and their uh, Chief Operating Officer, Graham Annesley, on whether he's happy and satisfied with the process the way it's all been handled this week. Well, we're not satisfied with what was said. Uh, it clearly did overstep the mark and uh, it was the response, the quick response from Billy Slater and the Melbourne Storm uh, that resulted in no further action being taken by the NRL. But we're not going to allow those sorts of comments to be uh, said, uh, regardless of whether it's in the heat, heat of battle or not. And uh, it doesn't matter whether there's a complaint from an opposition player or not. If those sorts of things take place and we become aware of it, you know, it's completely unacceptable and we will act. The Knights hit Manly hard. 
he had no right to score that. But it was all downhill from there. Here goes T-Rex. Big Tony Williams destroyed them on the right side as the passes stuck and the Seagulls finally broke their dark. Good ball. Great ball. Manly home, six tries to two. Patrick Mollahan, seven news. Yeah, quality player Isaac de Goyce and the local fans will be pleased to see him back in that number nine jump this afternoon. Another man that pleased to see him back wearing the number nine and starting the game is their coach Rick Stone. Scott Sattler caught up with him a short time ago. Well, Rick, comprehensively beaten last week by the Eagles. What have you asked the guys to improve on? Look, we've had a little bit of a freshen up early in the week, obviously. Uh, edge defence has been a big issue, and obviously us scoring a few more points and asking a few more questions of the opposition. Three players coming back, Cross, Cooper Vernon, and also Junior Sow. It's fair to say they're, they're pretty influential players at this side. Oh, absolutely. Crossy gives us a bit of presence there, and I think Cooper and um, Junior going on that left edge will really stiffen us up and give us a bit of continuity, that's for sure. What are you expecting from the Panthers? Oh, look, I think their first three games have been solid. You know, they've been physical um, and they've definitely been competitive in every game. I expect the same again today. Um, given the conditions, hopefully, you know, we'll see a bit of free-flowing footy, which would be terrific. Best luck today, mate. Thank you. It was an emotional performance from Newcastle round one when they defeated the Bulldogs. They've been a little bit flat, a little bit unlucky in round number two. They played well but got beaten by a better side, comprehensively beaten last week. It's a big day for them today. Are they going to bounce back or could this maybe be the start of a slide? Well, I think they're going to start well. I, I, you can feel as, uh, you know, you, we heard it from Rick Stone, there's a, a sense of, uh, you know, the occasion for them today. It's very important to them to get off to good starts. So I reckon the first 40, they'll be really solid. Whether they can carry it out for 80 minutes is, is one of the problems that they've had. A lot of teams have had this year, but, I, you know, I think the Knights are, are ready to, to rumble. And, boys, one positive for them, of course, is they're playing at home. They like playing in front of these uh, these home fans who always come out in numbers, particularly Easter Monday. They're still pouring through the gates here in Newcastle. It looks to be a good crowd on hand there enjoying the Easter Monday footy. Thanks for that, boys. We'll be back with you shortly. Also here with Jared Mullen and, and Jared, uh, big lead at half time. What happened, mate? Uh, mate, just the attitude in the second half. Uh, we let him come out, out of there in too easy, and uh, you know, he can't do that. It's all like Penrith. Uh, once they get on a roll, they're very hard to stop. What was the message from Coach Rick Stone at half time? Uh, mate, trying to have a good first 10 minutes and sort of. Um, I sort of shot him out early, but you know we probably did the opposite. And our second halves are killing us, and uh, we really need to pick that up. It's disappointing, mate. But uh, good luck next week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Paul. Well, there is a very disappointed Jared Mullen, and you can't blame him either because they led by 24 points to six at half time. At 24 12, Cooper Vuna almost scored in the corner, a critical moment of the game. And then Scott Giro just missing with an attempt, a drop goal was very critical as well. We will take a break here from Energy Australia Stadium. After the break, the boys will preview the Rabbitohs and the Dogs as a monster Monday night continues. Scott Sadler also caught up with the Knights and their hooker, Isaac de Goyce. Well, Isaac de Goyce, uh, big lead at half time. Disappointing to, to play that second half the way he did. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we uh, got off to a great start. Um, come out confident in the second half and, you know, they got a couple of early points, early tries, and he yeah, went downhill from there. You got a bad knock in the ninth minute of the game. Uh, can you remember much of the game at all? Yeah, I remember the game, mate. Um, I don't remember the knock though, but so I'll have to watch the replay. But yeah, nothing too serious. I feel it right now, so yeah. On a positive note, Akila Uate on the wing. He's an exciting player, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is, mate. Um, Fujian Fly, we call him. He's um, very exciting, got a great left foot step, and um, mate, he's still young, so he's got plenty of footy to come. Well, mate, bad luck today, but uh, well done for getting back on the field, and thanks for joining us. No worries, cheers, mate. Yes, and Knights fans out there, I know you'll be hurting after that loss, but uh, there's certainly enough to suggest that uh, there could be some good times ahead for the Knights. But Panthers fans, they'll be happy after that one. Uh, the, the Panther will be uh, roaring loud and proud out at CUA. Ken's next with Sport and another NRL thriller, this time between the Knights and the Panthers. Yes, Peter, it was a beauty. The Panthers win in a remarkable turnaround. Locked at 30-all, they scored in the last minute of play to win the match. 
Under siege Parramatta captain Nathan Kalis will retain the leadership for this week at least, despite calls for him to be replaced. Meanwhile in Newcastle, another amazing comeback today. The Panthers, like West Tigers yesterday, hauled in a huge half-time deficit to climb over the Knights for a thrilling 34-30 victory. In the opening exchanges, the Knights lost their starting hooker. The Goyce looked set for a busy game until this. He's got plenty there. The opening try was as messy as they come. Coote picked up a chip that could have gone anywhere. Then the Knights hit back with Uate's power, providing the perfect response. Attacking the Knights line, Penrith lost possession and Uate tested the defence again. The cover chased, but the flying winger wasn't slowing for anyone. It dented the Panthers' fight. Patterson used his footwork for his first try of the year. And by half-time, Uate had his third. Has he got it down? He has! Down by 18, the Panthers launched their fight back when Jennings finally found the line. The lead narrowed to six when Kingston slipped a pass. A kick that followed the dead ball line surprised everyone. It gave Penrith another chance, and with 18 to go, the scores were level. I've never seen that before. But Lewis's high quickly became a low when Mullen stepped around the Panthers veteran for the game breaker. However, this thriller didn't end there. It was all tied up again when Paulo leapt above the pack. Then, with less than 50 seconds remaining, it was hot potato football for the match winner. Clinton Fletcher, Nine News. The Storm is the only undefeated team in the competition. The Broncos are sitting at the bottom of the ladder. Tonight, the South's Canterbury match will complete round four. Well, the Props Pentathlon is coming up shortly and is our second guest as well, Newcastle coach Rick Stone, assuming that he gets away unscathed from small talk with Ryan. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Ryan Quayle and joining me on Small Talk this week is Rick Stone. Hi Rick, thanks for joining me. When people said you would be wooden spooners, how did that make you feel? I suppose it made us feel a little bit more determined to be honest. Um, we, we feel um, we, we had a fairly successful season last year and obviously we want to improve on that so it um, made us work a little bit harder right throughout the uh, off season. You played for the South Sydney in the late 80s. How does it feel to be coaching them against them this week? Yeah, I suppose it's a bit strange. Um, obviously South Sydney, a really proud club. Um, I really enjoyed my time there. I still got some friends there, but um, obviously they're going to be the enemy this week and we need a valuable two points. So hopefully they can have a down day for us and we, we can get a win ourselves. If you could buy any player, who would it be and why? Yeah, interesting one. Um, look, we're, we're down a couple of forwards at the moment. Uh, I'm probably looking for a, a front rower or a back rower who could um, give us a bit of game breaking ability. Um, not necessarily any one, but um, you know, um, what any anyone would be nice. Thanks for joining me, Rick. I'll be back next week. Until then, stay small. <laughs> Monday afternoon was indeed a thriller or for coach Rick Stone it probably ended up a horror didn't it because it was a, a great first half not such a good uh, second half Newcastle coach Rick Stone thanks for joining us on NRL on Fox what's happening with your starts and finishes at the moment yeah obviously we've been really impressive with our starts um, we've really thrown some questions at, at um, opposition teams and um, you know we just need to play for the full 80 minutes we need to concentrate and focus and, and probably control the ball and make sure we can handle those momentum shifts when they come because that's the hard part and Rick, my stat of the week, mate. Uh, oh. yeah, well, I've been, start, go, I've been going fantastic. Yeah. You know, I've got three in a row. It's it's looking really good, but just 
Better run my head first, shouldn't I? Well, you will we'll run the ad. Wizard run stat the of the week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, last week I said to you that the Dragons had no chance going down the Melbourne 11 years in a row and they got absolutely pumped. Yeah. Your side got pumped. Laurie's second side got pumped. The boys went up for it. Yeah, they, oh, they went up for it. Well, they didn't play. <laughs> Please, <laughs> no, give me a break. But anyway, this week the stat, Rick, which you will love. You will love this. Newcastle have not won a second half this season. It's the worst in the NRL and only the only team to do so. So, mate, what have you got to do to fix it? Obviously, we're a bit better than what we've done in the last four weeks, mate. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do better. The what I like the first half was all attack, but then in the second half, when a couple of times you needed to defend, you, you just seemed to drop away. It just looked like you needed a Kirk Kidley out there to really control the game and get the boys in going forward. Yeah, look, the skipper would help us. There's no doubt about mm. it. He can drive the team really well. Um, you know. Look, the Panthers had the ball. They did really well with their football and they asked some questions and, you know, completed their sets. Uh, we, ne we need to do, do better and probably the rot started just after half time when we let in a soft try after, yeah. after a bomb um, mi misplaced by Shannon McDonald. Yeah, Rick, you said after the game that the first defensive set in the second half had a smell about it. What are the indicators for you as a coach to know that something's about to happen? I just think the way they march us down the field, you know, um, the yards they made, the offload, you know, it was pretty soft set really and it just looked like we we're still in the dressing room in the second half. Um, you know, something we've definitely addressed um, this week and, and something that we need to improve on, there's no doubt about it, you've got to play and you've got to be, you know, show more resolve than that for the whole 80 minutes. Mate, just uh, yourself, you're a bit like myself, uh, were you at Burley Bears there for a little while? You applied your trade there, is that right? Yeah, certainly was, mate, there for a long time. Oh, we, we're brothers, yeah. yeah that's it. connection everywhere. <laughs> I was, I was there for three games. Yeah. Yeah. So What's you spent 10 years? years? You spent yeah, 10 yeah, years? a bit over 10 yeah. years, about 13 years at the Bears, so we had some good times and really enjoyed it. I love that club. Is that the question? Yeah. Well, you got nothing about football or about no, how the sides go. Well, maybe you could have chosen yeah. Kirk Gidley. Kirk Gidley, Kirk Gidley there, mate, there he's go. probably your most experienced player. Obviously, he had injured and he played against me in that All Stars game and obviously got injured. And, um, you know, Making when's he, a tackle on Wendell, by the way, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was on um, Corey Patterson. When's he due back, mate? Yeah, I'd like to think next week. You know, he's been coming on well. He's been training with the team for the last probably two weeks now. And um, he's up to about 90%. And we need him to be 100% um, ready and make sure he's, he's, he's training with the appropriate intensity before he comes back. If he does come back next week, hard question, does he go straight in the fullback role or do you look to maybe push him up into the halfback slot? Look, um, it's a tough one. Shadow McDonald's been really Very good for good. us. Yes, you know, really the first four weeks, he, he's really showed that he's an NRL quality player. There's yep. no doubt about that. Um, look, Shannon can play a bit on the wing, and Kurt's obviously got a bit of flexibility in where he can play. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. Yeah, all clubs have, and the supporters of those clubs have crowd favourites. And Uate oh. seems mm. as though he is the personality player for the Knights fans. On the weekend, three tries in the first 40 minutes. He's going to be a pretty special talent, isn't he? Oh, do that. Yeah, look, he is an outstanding ball carrier. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, he really gets the crowd involved in his games. There's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, he's a bit like your old mate, I'd say, Noah mm. Ndruku, who was another Fijian who, who had some sensational success in, in, in the big league. So, um, look, uh, Ku's still got plenty to learn, but he's a player moving along and, and learning very quickly. Rick, can I say, uh, you know, the start of the year was quite tough, but the way everyone was going, Newcastle, they're going to get the wooden spoon, they're going to get this. What did you say to the players, like, in general? Like, I mean, you know, backs to the wall, Newcastle, very tight-knit community. Yeah, it is. There's no doubt about it. I think what we talked to our players about was definitely showing the appropriate resolve each week and making sure that the, our effort was recognised and you um, know our determination was there. Uh, we always had confidence in ourselves. We had a squad that made the semi-finals last year, and sure. look, we lost a couple of players, which which was always tough. But I think our depth was good enough, and we, we still got confidence and high expectations of ourselves. What about young Scott Dura? I read the paper on the weekend that he was under a bit of pressure in the halfback role to one stay in the team. He had a, at that have a better kicking game and general organising. Mate, as a coach, you know, you pick up the paper and read that sort of stuff, and as a player, you pick it up. The first thing I'll be doing as a player is coming speaking to my coach and saying, Well, what is happening? Where do you see me fitting into the side? 
Yeah, look, Scotty, Scotty's been terrific for us in the last couple of years since he's been in first grade. There's no yep. doubt about that. Yep. Um, look, he, he, he's got some areas that he needs to improve in his game, and me and him have obviously spoken about that, and he's working hard on those particular areas. I think his last two weeks have been a big improvement, and the composure and goal that he showed, you know, when he gave him the extra responsibility of mm -hmm. kicking goals, he, he struck the ball really well, yep. and his general kicking game is, is very good. It's probably as good as most sort of halfbacks in the NRL. So there's a couple of other areas that, we, you know, we know that he needs to improve on and um, he's working well there. Rick, how much truth is it in the rumour that the Knights are after Jonathan Thurston? I know you've been linked with a number of players, but over the last week or so, Jonathan Thurston's name seems to be mentioned quite a bit. Yeah, look, there's been a number of players linked to us. There's no doubt about it. We're, we're interested in some players and we, we may have some space in our cap. Um, our priority is actually with, the, with our players who are with the club at the moment and that's a, an important one to give them the confidence that um, we're going to sort something out with them moving forward. Um, you know, it would be great to have a, a marquee type of player at the club. I think um, it would be good for the town and it would definitely be good for the club and it's a great attraction. But, um, you know, you've got to make sure they can fit in with the rest of your players in the cap. Could Brett Finch be that sort of player? Oh, possibly. Like I said, we've got Ben Rogers and um, Scott Giro coming off contract and they're our priority at the moment. Um, Brett Finch is a person who is off contract and he's a halfback. Um, you know, we, we may talk to him down, down the track, but again, you know, those players are our priority at the moment. Yeah, well, look, uh, the one kid that I like who's gone really well for those first four games, I think, is Mark Tafua. Like, he's been only out there a couple of years, come from Rugby Union, uh, but he's been very strong. Last year he played f front row for you, yep. and then you, this year you put him into that lock, and he seems to have a bit more freedom. Yeah, he probably has. Uh, look, Mark's always had the athleticism to yep. sort of play that particular role. Uh, I think he's doing a decent job there, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's a, he is off contract as well, Mark, and he's a player that we're you know, hope, hopefully ready to sign in the next couple of uh, weeks. Yeah, in the second half, Rick, they rolled through your middle quite easily, the Penrith Panthers. You're taking on South Sydney, who are arguably one of the, the strongest packs in the competition. It, it's a good test for your forwards to aim up this weekend because South Sydney showed us on Monday night, if you're not prepared to meet them physically, uh, game could be all over. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the momentum they can create with those big men is going to be tough. Um, I think after a look at gut-wrenching loss like ours um, on Monday night, probably getting back on the horse quickly is not a bad mm. thing. Obviously, the test is the physical one against the Rabbitohs. Uh, not very often you come off a Monday night where you're playing the team who's played on a Monday night as well. So we've both got the same turnaround and, um, you know, it should be fairly even there. It's getting played at Blue Tongue. It's pretty even there. So, um, you know, things are in our favour, I'd suggest. Mate, I really enjoy Corey Patterson. Uh, he's come a long way last year. had a few troubles and he came out and I respect him for that. But even Indigenous camp, I saw him grow as a player, but he's taken that into this season and he's playing some good football. Yeah, Pato's an impressive young man, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's got his head screwed on pretty well. Obviously, he had some well-documented sort of issues last year. I think he got over them and worked pretty hard in the off-season to make sure he come back to training sure. um, fully fit and ready to go. Now, Rick, of course, you've heard of our swagment, the sag, uh, the segment, swagment? the swag bag. <laughs> swagment, yes. Uh, and you've brought in the Newcastle Knights flag. Explain the significance of that. Anything behind it at all? Or? Oh, look, I don't think I'm as famous as the players that I coach, so they've signed the Knights flag and hopefully our Knights supporter could enjoy that. But but uh, you're certainly bringing uh, some, some great strike to this side at the moment. The boys are, are certainly performing better than many people thought at the start of the season. So, uh, Rick, best of luck with the season. We won't say goodbye just yet, though. We want you to hang around for the Props Pentathlon because I want to quiz you who you're going to put up for Newcastle. Who are you going to throw up at Newcastle way? So we've got a few skillful front rowers, but I think Avan Tunavava is our pick. Um, plays golf well, so I reckon he can kick the ball all right and pass the ball like There's not much well. to beat there. Three, do you reckon he can do that? Oh, I'd, I'd be back in a van for sure. Nice. Rick, uh, great to have you in the studio and once again, best of luck with the Knights this season. Thanks very much. Stay with us. Uh, coming up, our third guest is on standby. That's Cronulla's double centurion, John Morris. That's next. Let's now go back to the team at Gosford in Warren Smith and Greg Alexander. And boys, the Knights have surprised a few people with their play in 2010 thus far. Yeah, they've uh, at times thrown the ball around as they did it last season uh, to good effect. But boy, what they're doing defensively is really hurting them at the moment. 
a couple of seasons ago. That was a bit of a Newcastle trait. Brian Smith worked, worked very hard on their defence to get them to the point where they were back and once again a competitive side. But they're leaking some again this season. We'll wait and see what they offer here tonight, of course. It would have been a feature of Rick Stone's uh, addresses, I guess, with just chats and the video work during the week in the lead-up to this game. Boys, we have to arrest these second-half slides. We'll wait and see if they can pull it off, though. Let's hear from Rick Stone right now, who earlier spoke to Greg. Rick, one from four means the two points on offer this afternoon are absolutely crucial. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Desperation is obviously something that we've got to have uh, today. Um, you know, both coming off a short turnaround, which is fair, I suppose, and playing is uh, fairly equal. Uh, looking forward to it. How's the confidence in the side? Because you're up 24-6, and I know it's happened to plenty of sides this year where they've, they've given up big leads. But I think a loss like that against Penrith on Monday can knock the confidence around your blokes. How have they recovered? Yeah, it probably can. You know, we need to do better in the second half. There's no doubt about that. I think uh, all the boys are hurting about that. Probably the short turnaround's not a bad thing for us, so we can get back on the horse and um, make sure we get involved and see if we can rectify that straight away today. South Sydney's pack were great against the Bulldogs on Monday. That's where the game will be won and lost. Absolutely. You know, big pack, uh, roll forward well, great hooker, you know, real dynamic out of dummy half and cause you trouble. That's obviously the first and foremost um, job for us in, in the middle and making sure we do that well. And if they do do a job in the middle, there'll be some chances out wide and nobody in the NRL at the moment is finishing off tries. Well, maybe apart, apart from Brett Morris, but Aku Yuata in the right wing for the Newcastle Knights are scoring tries hand over fist. Oh, he's been fantastic. Oh, you know, might be a smoky for state of origin. Uh, I, I think he's eligible to play for country. So uh, Aquila is such a big man such uh, and so light on his feet. He's got a great step on him. Uh, scored uh, three, three first half tries against Penrith um, on Monday and, uh, and, and almost won them the game single-handedly getting across for those tries just so hard to handle and uh, South Sydney's defence on the extremities which we've thought at times can be a little bit suspect will have to be at its best to watch him things a lot brighter at Redfern South Sydney with their third straight win the Rabbitohs 28-10 victors over the struggling Newcastle Tim Gilbert nine news the Dragons are on top of the ladder, followed by the Storm Titans and the oh, Tigers and the Titans. The Broncos are anchored on the bottom. The Eels and the Raiders complete round five tomorrow night. Where you want to go? Matty John show, mate. Hey, Terrence CC, what's happening, mate? No, no, hey. I am quite no. Hey, uh, CC, hey, it's Jared Mullen from the Knights, Anthony Watnall from Sea Eagles. I can't believe it. Jared, they say you're the new Joey Johns. Yeah. Does that mean you also have an annoying older brother with his own TV show? <laughs> <laughs> Jared, tough start to the season for the Knights. Yeah, that's very mate. That's They'll right. get better as soon as your missing players come back from injury and get time off for good behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Watnall, you got picked in the NRL All-Stars. Yeah. I'm an All-Star too. I got picked in the Cappy All-Stars for most times changing lanes without using indicator. <laughs> Anthony, you were born in Australia, yeah? Yeah. I wasn't. I came here by boat. <laughs> no, really. The 515 from Manly. <laughs> Anthony, you've only had one club after all these years. Yeah, mate. I also have one club. I keep it here just in case I get attacked. <laughs> so, Jared, it was your birthday last week. Yeah, birthday, mate. Happy birthday, mate. You Thanks, should have mate. asked for something unusual for a present. Like what? Like a win for the Knights. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're here now, boys. Uh, see you, see you later. See hey, see. can you say hello to Kwando uh, for me, Terry? <laughs> okay, no, I am Kwando. <laughs> I'm not Terrence! Yes, now. OK, everyone, it's time for Home When You're Away. Please welcome for the Knights, Corey Patterson and Jared Mullenberg. Right on, lads. Now, Newcastle. Newcastle, yes, they're still out there, boys. Now, uh, before we get into a bit of fun, Jared Mullen, first of all, mate, been a difficult six months for the club, uh, the most difficult period probably in the club's history. How's morale amongst the boys? Mate, the calls are very good. Um, you know, we started the season off not too good, but uh, I think you're going to see a very different side this weekend, and you know, we've been training very hard to you know, bring out the best in everyone. One of the bonuses this week, boys, Corey, is that uh, Kirk Gidley returns. Big bonus for the Knights. Fantastic. And I mean, I mean less, yeah, unfortunately for North Queens there, but luckily for the Knights, no Jonathan Thurston. So it really swings it your way. Yeah, exactly right. Mate. We're lucky enough to have Gids back. You know, he's our captain, our leader, and um, 
We wish we could go out there and play for each other because, you know, he's not our saviour, but he's definitely our, our go-to man. Right up, boys. Good luck uh, Saturday afternoon, 5.30, Energy Australia Stadium against the Cowboys. Now, it's time for Home When You're Away. Howdy. Now, now, it's time for Home When You're Away. Now, in somewhere in this audience tonight, we have got a night supporter that's about, that is about to get a shot. Are you uh, a yeah, night supporter by any chance? Really? What's the matter with you? What about you, pal? <laughs> night support? I'm just the bus driver that brought the night support. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, here we are. Now, right, we've got the Nana Nights. I've got a... Yeah. I've got a bit of a surprise for one of you ladies. Does one of, when one of you ladies were out of the house the other day, these boys went in to have a bit of a play. Take a look at this. <laughs> Yeah. Mullo, have a look at that. Elaine, she loves us. Most nannas do, Pato. Have a look at that. No, I'm there, buddy. Hey, you ready for this? I was born ready. Have a look at all Elaine's night skin, Mullo. Night's pillow, Pato. Oh, look at Maddie there. He looks a bit constipated. Ah, the nights! Corey, are you aware Elaine loves knitting? No, I wasn't. I really enjoyed it too. Have a look at this. That's very nice. Up the night! Hey, Pato, look at this. Here's a teddy bear to keep it warm at night. And look at this, a night's match day signed cushion. How good's that? Hey, that's unreal. A night's radio. How good's that to listen to the game? Not as good as that. 1907, year of the nights. Bit of night fever coming at you. And the real deal, Saturday night fever. <laughs> Woo! Look at this, Pato, a night's nana stamp. You don't have enough ink as it is. Nah. Up the night! <laughs> Up the night! Yeah. Well, this looks like my man's kitchen. Yeah. Look at these league spoons. I wonder who's going to get the wooden one. Mate, it's not going to be ours. Up the night! Corey, did you know Elaine makes a bit extra money on other people's clothes? Mate, I had no idea. That sounds good, but she might be able to do mine. Yeah, you fold. Would love to, mate. Up the night! It's been great getting to know you a little bit better. The nice nannas are some of our greatest supporters. We promise to do you proud in 2010. After night! Ah. After night! Come on! Eli, how are you, darling? Just hang on to that. How you doing? How did you get in the mind? Up you come, mate. Hello, how are you, Mum? Friday. Oh. Ah. Oh. Have a seat, Elaine. Oh, I think we've got a live one. There we go. You beauty. Now, Elaine. Yes. What about this? A bit of advice for the boys. What are they going to do this week? They're going to do a lot better. We hope. <laughs> we hope. Think of, now, who's your favourite all-time Knights player? Look, we love them all. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. We love them all. Right answer. Right answer. <laughs> <laughs> now, Elaine, yes. we've got some great prizes here at the yeah. moment. Now, we're going to ask you three questions related to that tape item with the boys, OK, in your house. Each one carries a prize, and for one of the questions, you can ask the boys for a clue, OK? okay. So I want you to concentrate, OK? OK. Up the nights. Oh, Let's no. do it, pal. <laughs> OK, now, the first... The first one, this up for grabs here, we've got a five burner beef eater barbecue. You like barbecues? Love them. Oh, fantastic. Love them. Okay. But someone's got to cook it. Oh. Someone's <laughs> got to cook it. We'll get Pato around to do that. No one's good, good man. Darling. Which player was doing the ironing in your house? Which player? Jared. Let's have a look. <laughs> it was yeah. Jared Mullen. Yeah. Carl, barbecue. Oh, there you go. Oh, Fantastic. <laughs> Mate, we'll even throw in some meat, a few sausages, a few wrist holes. We'll get the chief around to cook for you. Good. Love you, chief. Great. That's gold. Okay. <laughs> question, <laughs> question number two, and this is for a new black Wii console. You like black Wii? You like the Wii? Do we ever play Wii? <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
Okay, I'll take that. All right. <laughs> Jared's done the pacing. I know, I know. I, I was going to say, no offence, Lane, at your age, playing Wii is not really the problem, I is know. it? <laughs> um, I can play. I okay. Can play. What player received a Knight's Nana stamp? Which player received a Knight's Nana stamp? Uh, Corey. Yeah. Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> Woo! Look at this, Pada, a Knight's Nana stamp. Ah, Corey Patterson. Beautiful. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 No, not at all. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll get Joey Johns around to play that with you. Yeah, right about okay. that. You can install and you it come now. too. Yes, me as well. Yes. Right up. Question number, this is the big one. This is from okay. the Samsung TV. Oh, you yeah. One of those ones, oh, okay. okay. Nice. Just put on one. <laughs> How many times did Corey Patterson say, Yup the Knights? Oh, now, you haven't asked for your clue yet. You can ask the boys for a clue. Ask for a clue. Ask for a clue. It's <laughs> Andrew Johns. It's between, it's between and six and eight. Roughly. Seven. <laughs> roughly, roughly, roughly. Roughly. Have a look. Up uh, the nights. Up 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 the nights. Thank you, uh, Elaine. Well done, Corey Patterson. Good luck on the weekend. We're going to a break. Stay with us. Coming up soon, Don Kirk gets amongst it with Luke Patton. Jason Stevens has you wish you'd never seen him before. Are you smarter than a footballer? Returns, and Daredevil explorer Albie Sandals meets some of the locals in Manly. Can you really get away with that? Welcome to Around the Ground for this week, and as the boys have just mentioned, great news this week as we hit round six, in particular for Newcastle. Kurt Gidley back on deck. Now, Kurt hasn't played since the All-Stars game in February where he suffered the knee injury. He suffers the injury just as he goes into the tackle. Got absolutely hammered. Now, he may end up coming back through the halves in Newcastle because there's a big doubt over Scott Duro for their clash against the Cowboys on Saturday. Now, that could end up a good thing for Kurt because he's under pressure to keep his spot as fullback and captain in the New South Wales side. In fact, the mail is strong that Jared Hayne will be the man wearing the New South, New South Wales number one jumper. And I caught up today with the arguably the greatest ever fullback for New South Wales, and that's the former Tiger, Gary Jack. Played 17 State of Origin matches for New South Wales. Who would he pick? as the number one for the Blues? Look, I think you'd have to go Jared Hayne on the form he showed last year and this year behind the side which has struggled, Parramatta. He'd be my number one fullback for New South Wales. I think he's wasted on the wing. It's a big change because the incumbent fullback is also the captain in Kirk Gidley. Yeah, yeah that's true, but we did lose the series last year. We did, did lose it 2-1. And you know, all respect to Kurt, he hasn't played this year. You know, he hasn't played for the first four or five weeks. So I don't know how you can expect someone to be an automatic selection for the number one spot when you haven't played. In tonight's first game, the Knights lead the Cowboys 30 to six at half time. A boost for the Knights. Captain Kurt Gidley was back from injury for the first time this year and his teammates responded. Seraldo spun over in the first couple of minutes. Then down the same side, Newcastle found more points. The Newcastle Knights slicing them to bits. Without captain Jonathan Thurston, the Cowboys made a terrible start against the Knights in Newcastle. After Cameron Serraldo's try, Anthony Watts was reported for a high tackle. The Knights went up 10-0 two plays later through Keith Lilia, and the Cowboys' defence was in tatters. And the tries kept on coming for Newcastle, giving the Knights a 30-6 lead at half-time. Yeah, he plays on the left-hand side of the field. Ordinarily, on the other side of the field is Adam McDougall, but we know the man they call the Mad Dog is out at the moment with a broken thumb, but he's part of our pre-game show right here on Super Saturday. And, Adam, thanks for your time. First off, uh, how's the thumb, and when can we see you back on the track? Yeah, no, um, I broke my thumb a few weeks ago trying to tackle a front row off the tap, so uh, something uh, centre shouldn't do, but uh, that's because uh, halfbacks these days defend on the wing and uh, blow something we have to tackle front rowers. So, uh, 
I missed Andrew Johns. He used to tackle the front rowers for me, but uh, <laughs> I should be back in about two to three weeks. So it's not too bad overall. Uh, Adam, how is the, how's the camp? Because do they realise how much pressure they're under and how much they really need to win this game against the Cowboys? Back at home, four losses in a row, and the Cowboys without just about all their star players. It's a must win for you blokes. Yeah, look, you know, we've been uh, a little bit frustrated. We, we believe we should have been uh, a lot better in the standings than we are. Uh, we've probably let go of two games. Uh, Melbourne and uh, obviously uh, Penrith, you know, we should never have lost both of them games. And uh, as a result, we've backed ourselves into a corner and uh, the only way to come out of that is uh, swinging. So uh, we're going to have to stand up today and uh, make sure we come away with two points. Adam, Kurt Gidley's return. What does that mean to the team as far as his leadership is concerned? Um, I think his energy. Um, essentially, you know, you wouldn't meet a guy who plays with more energy and passion. And, uh, you know, he, he's not big as far as, uh, you know, stature goes or, you know, he's not the most skillful or fastest player in the competition. But, uh, you know, he, he plays with his heart in his sleeve and uh, he leads by example. So hopefully he'll uh, bring a lot of energy to the team and uh, we'll see a, a lot more guys hopefully following his lead, running hard and straight. Adam, how's Isaac de Goyes? And, and the timing wasn't great for the club, was it, with Kirk Gidling not starting the season, uh, who was very good out of dummy half, and Isaac de Goyes just finding his way back from a new reconstruction. How's his confidence? Yeah, look, you know, he um, he was always going to, you know, be a work in progress as the season progressed. He was going to get better and better. And, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, he's shown some glimpses of the Isaac de Goyce of last year. And, uh, you know, any hooker is probably as important as your halfback in today's modern game. And uh, he's only going to get better as the weeks progress. And um, I'm hoping um, it starts this weekend. And, uh, you know, I'm sure um, he'll have a big one. Dugs and yourself, you have been in good form. Um contractual-wise, are you, are, you, are you signed for next year, or, or what are you thinking, or will you leave that until uh, later in the year? Um, it's funny, I had a conversation with Steve Simpson about it just the other day. I said to him, you know, personally, you've been off waiting until about round 12 or 13, and uh, seeing how the grind of week-in and week-out footy is going on your body, and, and more importantly, your mind. So, for me, I physically feel as good as I was when I was uh, 18, but uh, mentally, it's a challenge getting yourself up week-in and week-out to play football. Uh, you know, a lot goes in, into the preparation physically, but it, I think it's more the, the mental side that uh, if you're not 100% mentally right to play, that's when you let yourself down. So obviously I'll wait till the middle of the season and uh, see how the bind is. Adam, uh, thanks for your time. It's a shame you can't be out there tonight, but uh, we'll see how the Newcastle Knights go anyway against the Cowboys. Yeah, no, thanks guys. Looking forward to a great game. Adam McDougall joining us right here on our pre-game show on Super Saturday. Boys, back to you fellas in the studio. We'll come back and have a chat about the Cowboys in a few moments' time. But the Knights will get the points on Super Saturday. They've beaten the Cowboys 36 points to 18. Well, in the end, the 30 to 6 score line at half time was too much for the Cowboys, but it was a much better performance from them, them in the second half. Newcastle, too good in the first, and really uh, one of the one of the more ordinary efforts from a from a football team in that opening stanza. The Cowboys, very disappointing, but with a little bit of pride, will walk off the field and look forward to next week but a much deserved win by the Knights and that snaps that four game losing streak so got the captain courageous Kurt Gidley congratulations uh, first win back on the field all good but of course mate in the second half now being out there as captain what did you feel unfolded there for the boys uh, I mean yeah I mean we had a great first half and, and that's probably the best half we've had this year I think but uh, yeah I mean Stoney's going to be disappointed in the second half as we are but we, we let him back in but uh, yeah good win nice to be back and the injury, everything come up good for you, mate? Yeah, got through it, which is, which is always a good thing to start with. Um, a little bit scrappy in a couple of areas, but nice to be back. And, of course, the crowd always comes out here in Newcastle. That must be enjoyable for you. Yeah, it is. They're very vocal, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see them out. Next week, big game for you again, and, and important that you start stringing back-to-back -back wins together. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've, we've lost a couple of games that we, we might have we, we could have won, I suppose, but uh, it's about putting a few back-to-back, -back, that's for sure. Thanks, Kurt. Go and enjoy it for the rest of the boys. Well, despite another fade in the second half, Kurt Gidley is smiling because his team has got the points here tonight. He's back on the field, of course, trying to get them going in the right direction and prove to the New South Wales selectors he's right for the Origin Series in 2010. The second half of games this year, they've been outscored 92 points to 28, but they have the most important two points tonight. The Knights have beaten the Cowboys Back to the studio with the boys in a moment. We're only halfway through Super Saturday. Now, last night, the Newcastle Knights were at home. They'd lost their previous two at Energy Australia Stadium this season and they were desperate for a win. This is how they fared. Newcastle desperate to avoid a fifth consecutive loss. 
Up against a weakened Cowboys outfit missing skipper Jonathan Thurston, this was their best chance. And they took it with both hands, or an outstretched arm in Cameron Serraldo's case. It's a try. Good start. The ninth. Minutes later, Newcastle struck again by exposing the Cowboys on the same side of the field. From Gidley, away to the Lear. He's got Uate with him. He won't need him. The Newcastle Knights slicing them to bits. And when Corey Patterson ran in the Knights' third unanswered try, things were looking ominous for the visitors. Patterson is in, and you can just about throw in the white towel and stop the fight. The big hits continued, so did the blows. Isaac de Goyce with try number four. Mullen, Isaac de Goyce. An error from night skipper Kirk Gidley in his first game back from injury gave North Queensland a breakthrough. Coming through, North Queensland have scored through Shannon Gallant. The visitors would have felt hard done by when Cooper Vuna was given the benefit of the doubt. He gives it away to Cooper Vuna. He's knocked that on. Oh, yeah. Nah. There was no doubting the wingers second. They have to as well, Sal. Another ball to Vuna. And guess what? Another try for Newcastle. The Knights were caught napping in the second, and John Williams punished them. Bolton, now knocked backwards by Williams, that was okay. He straightens and went past Tom Mika, found a yawning gap, and John Williams dives under the black dot. And when Ashley Graham found space, a comeback was on the cards. The margin could have been closer. Mason can't get his hands on the ball enough. A offload to Williams, he's got Thompson with him. He ran away from him if he passes the ball. Werner's hat trick coming to the Knights' rescue. 36-18, the final score. And it was 30-6 to six at half-time, and it looked like being anything. It got very tight, and the Knights, in the end, fairly lucky to get away with it, but it got a lot closer than it should have done. Cooper Vuna got a hat-trick. Uh, the Cowboys won the second half 12 points to six. The, the big news, of course, apart from the victory uh, for Newcastle, Joey, the return of, of Kurt Gidley. He looked a touch rusty, as you would expect, but I thought he yeah. was very good. Yeah, he was solid and usual Kurt Gidley performance. He, he was full of energy and enthusiasm and he, and he sparked the Knights. Uh, the first half of the Knights, the, they were sensational. Their shape and attack, it was great. But the second half, it's a worry because Really, they, they should have won by 60 last night. Uh, the way the game went, no Thurston, no O'Donnell, no Aaron Payne. But they went to sleep. Full credit to the Cowboys, showed character to come back, but the Knights' second half was disappointing. I th he ended up just about being the match winner, Kurt Gidley. Mm. There was time on the... They were, they were 12 in front. John Williams goes straight through. Mm. Like, they were going to score there and only be six down and had all the momentum. Uh, it could have been another one that got away in that second half. As you say, it, it's a huge concern. It was, you know, the first half they were slick in attack. A few of these tries, there's good shape outside the halves, which is good. And they were stripping the numbers on the edge of the ruck from the Cowboys. They were poor in defence. They disappointing. They just weren't numbering up. And, and it was some of their established players who weren't aiming out. Look at this. This is sort of simple play. It's four defenders from the far post. It, where there should be six defenders, it was four. It was, it was terrible. But Willie, Mason. Uh, Willie Mason was good for the Cowboys This is disappointing night. for the impact. Knights. It's still a real impact. This is just lazy. You see a young bloke here, come back, just too late. Yeah. For a club that's built on, on, on defence, you know, that would be disappointing for Rick Stone. OK, Willie Mason, I, I thought, looked like he went, went out there and, and assumed responsibility as he would with those senior players missing. Yeah, he did. Some of the things I've noticed with Willie's game is his play the ball's remarkably different. He's played the balls last year with the slowest in the comp. And you watch now, his real attention to detail. He's played the balls, he's hitting the line harder, coming off with a couple of nice offloads. Yeah, that one to John Williams, which nearly got him right back into the game with about 15 minutes to go. I tell you who, it is nice to see playing some good football. Cameron Seraldo. Mm. Yeah, he was out for 12 months, um, tough injury. It was, it was he broke awful. his ankle and dislocated his ankle. It was at right angles. And to come back from that, uh, especially last night with Steve Simpson being yeah, out, exactly. he, he took the pack forward, he played well. OK, well, we'll break again. Good win for the Newcastle last night. One that they needed, uh, four competition points now, and that keeps them up there with, well, the middle part of the, uh, the division of the competition ladder. We'll break now and see how the Roosters got th their job done last night as well. What a ball to Alderson, who's in open space. Ran away from his support. Found Cooper Itzis on the inside. And that is a great Roosters try.
At times he looked rusty, but Kirk Gidley has made a winning return for the Knights. Adam and Origin wasn't on his mind. I'm happy with getting through the game, getting a win and, uh, and being back on the park. Knights winger Cooper Verner cross for three tries. Cowboys coach Neil Henry coming up with his own hat-trick of reasons why his side didn't win. Application, desire, commitment. Henry says Willie Mason will be promoted from the bench next week. Adam Thompson for Sports Tonight. In Newcastle, the Cowboys shot themselves in the foot in the first half, letting in six tries. The defence there was embarrassing. I said, if I could dock some pay there, I would be. New South Wales captain Kurt Gidley got some mistakes out of the system and is delighted his season is finally underway. The first priority is to get through the 80 minutes, which I did. Um, pulled up sweet. The Knights only scored one try in the second 40, but that completed Cooper Vuna's hat-trick. He's probably still smiling. Ben's Hamilly, Nine News. Looking at the table, Penrith have jumped into second while the Sharks replace Brisbane at the bottom. Melbourne and Manly complete round six tomorrow. Castle enforcer Avan Tuamavave shows off his silky skills in the props pentathlon. Be your best friend forever. I'll give you hugs and kisses. OK, it's time for that segment when we showcase the big men of the game and their silky skills. And this week's contestant in the props pentathlon is Newcastle enforcer Avan Tuamavave. Let's see how the big man went. <laughs> Hi, it's Cooper Vuna from Newcastle Knights. This week on Props Pentathlon, I have with me my friend Ivan Tumavavi, who has just flown across the ditch to join us this year, and he's, he's brought over his flat-footed pancake feet with him. So, Ivan, any thoughts on what's going to happen this t today? Oh, man, just uh, close my eyes and kick the ball, I guess. First goal, we have the 30-metre field goal, so here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, are you serious with that guy, is it? Yeah! <laughs> Mate, that was pretty easy. Should we go a bit 10 metres back, or what do you want to do? I think we should take us halfway, to be honest. Second skill is a sideline conversion, and I think he's going to nail this. And he's walking up towards it, and he goes for it. And... Oh, you're kidding me. Mate, Helen Clark can probably get that in from the sideline. What was going through your head? Uh, not a lot, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, third skill is 40-20. Uh, Yvonne, here we go. Let's get this in. Oh, good service with the pass. Good strike from the foot. Here we go. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's two. Second to last skill, Yvonne has to chip and chase. And I think he's going to do it. It's two from three, so we really need this. This guy, boy. Here we go. He fends it off. He gets the ball. He goes. Chips it over the top. Is he going to get it? Yes! It's a try! Oh, what celebrator should have said? <laughs> Could do a lot better than that. <laughs> no, that was good. Thanks, thanks, that was, thanks. That, was, that, was, that was very good. Thanks. Mate, if you could score that try like that, mate, I would be your best friend forever. I'll give you hugs and kisses. What was going through your head when you had the ball in your hand? Last tackle. Oh, no, you know, I just got the ball. I knew I was in the zone. Just didn't know what to do. Last girl, we have the left to right, right to left pass. And today, we have Big Wind or Sailor. Mate, what, do you, what would you prefer? Would you prefer a bullet pass to your gut, or would you prefer a cheeseburger? Mate, just give me the ball, and I'm doing international. Right, I got that. If you any thoughts on the big Dow? Yeah, well, he certainly is big and he's got a big enough target, so hopefully I can put in his guts. For sure we will. First pass, left to right. Let's go, Ivan. We really need this. Oh, it's all right. He got him on the left arm. It's all, that's, that's good. All right, right to left. Oh, you nailed it! You nailed it! Yes! Mate. That was unbelievable. I think cut Kurt out. Jared, mate, you can never be wearing the one and the seven. Wait, uh, there's a new chief in town then. Do you look at him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look out. Oh. Scotty Giro and uh, Benny Rogers. Ivan Tuam of Ave takes over from Grant Millington at the top of the table. Great celebrations from the big man. 
and that vital half point for being the first man to get it through Dell and that could be the difference uh, between glory and failure at the end of the comp. Uh, a great effort by Ivan Tumavave up there in Newcastle.